What's going on, beautiful people? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Black Sheep Perspective. Today, man, I got one of my favorite return guests, somebody who became a true close friend of mine because of the podcast and somebody who also really opened up my mind and my appreciation for art in so many different ways from graffiti to fine art to all kind of levels of art that I know you're going to remind me and, and the viewers and the fans, you know, watching. My, my brother from another, did some A-Gan for coming, brother. I appreciate you, Brian. It's been a long time. Salute. Me, bro. Omi, since, since our last podcast, like, there's no other way around it. You've been fucking killing it. Thank you. Like, you've been killing it. And I know you're going to be humble and you're not going to, you know, gloat about it because that's not your style. But holy fuck. And I'm not saying that you're killing it because of the podcast. Let me not let me not make it seem like that. You just have been on your grind and your art and your work and, and everything that you do that you're so good at has been blowing up more and more each project. Basically, each project, dude. And congratulations, homie. How, you Thank know, you, how does it feel to be where you at right now, bro? It feels good, man. And, and yo, again, I think at the, the first podcast that I did, like, that seriously was, was your shit. You right. Know? So it, it does feel dope to come back. You know what I'm saying? And, like, you gave me that, like, little bit of, uh, I don't know, confidence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, going, moving forward with shit. I remember, uh, and, and I want to remind people of this because it was funny, and you got to admit this, right? Let, let's talk about how, how we made this happen. So quickly, you know, shout out to my homeboy, Doug. You know, he used to be my editor. He's, he's an old uh, schoolmate of, of, of Dissom's. And um, Doug recommended, you know, that I holler at you because, you know, you're a very well-known graffiti artist in Miami and, and you had a great following and so on. And he used to fuck with you back in the days and you were a real last Neo dude and so on and so forth. That was already enough for me. Check your page out, whoop de whoop whatever, whatever. So I hit you up, right? So uh, pay attention, folks, because I hit him up, right? I, I I message him on Instagram. I DM him, and I tell him that, you know, just everything was going on, you know, that, it, you know, hey, man, I'm, I have a podcast, this, this, and that, dug this, and I heard this and that. You got a great story, this and that. I would love to fucking, you know, hunt, you know, do a podcast. And you were like, all right, cool, yeah, I'm down. Now, guys, this one is very creative and expressive with his art, <laughs> Verbally, if you don't know him good, that guy's real short answers, you know, chick, <laughs> chack, chick, chick. So I'm pulling teeth, you know, with him, and I'm like, hey, listen, I would love, because this is what I like to do with, with guests, especially if you know nothing about me, I don't know, you know, know you personally, I want you to feel the vibe, man. I really do want my guests to, you know, to feel comfortable with me. I don't want them to feel like I'm just interviewing them. I'm just drilling you with fucking questions. Like, that's that's whack, you know what I mean? So I, I tell this to him, I'm like, hey, gee, um, when can we hang out, man? You know, I, I would love to hang out with a breakfast, lunch, or shit, man. If you're down, we can have dinner and some drinks. No homo, ha 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 ha. Um, you know, uh, and that way, you know, we can get to know each other. I can, you know, this is this and that. This one comes back with like, I don't understand, and I'm like, what do you mean? I'm just saying, you know, just so we can talk, get to know each other. But and you go, you mean like you're screening me? <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that's in our text. So you're screening me? Bro, I came back at you. I go laughing my ass off. I go, homie, I'm not screening you. I would love to have you on the podcast, period. I'm just trying to, you know, lower your guard a little bit, vibe with you a little bit so that you don't feel tense during the podcast. You don't feel like I'm drilling you. That's all, man. Hey, man, if that's kind of awkward for you, it's all good. Let me know what we can do the podcast. If it's not awkward for you, let me know what we can link up for a drink or something. You're like... All right, what are you doing Wednesday? This taco, this, that, what? Right, boom, let's do it. Right. And that's what we did, man. We broke the ice. We had a fun time that night. You know, we, we got not drunk, but we had a, you know, got a good buzz, talked some shit, ended up knowing several people together. Right. And um, we, were, we we did the podcast, man. The podcast was dope, bro. And you really, you, you, you taught me a lot about art. You taught me a lot about different levels of art, graffiti, how it needs to be recognized as, as an art. And, and it's crazy because I was telling a good friend of mine that I was going to have you back on. And his first reaction was, bro, it's crazy how graffiti and all that artistic stuff, including the graffiti, has now become like a staple. Like you want that on your wall. You want that, you know, on the outside of your store. And and, and people like you are a big reason because of that, dude. Thank you, brother. I mean, it's 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 an art movement. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I think now it's getting recognized as that, even though it's gone on for such a long time period you know um and it, it 
It's funny how you were saying that though. The whole screening shit. I didn't remember that, but it no, does you didn't. It, yeah, it does sound like me. Like, yo, what's going on here? You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Especially back then, because like now after after your podcast, I've done a few. You know what I'm saying? And like I always say, bro, like cameras make me nervous, microphones make me even more nervous. It's, it's a little weird for me, but I think yours helped to like break the ice, you know, and and it got me a lot more like comfortable in doing this shit. And it's thanks awesome. to you, bro. The way you do shit. The thank way you, that, thank like, you, brother. It feels like just a, a very organic conversation. You know, it's not like like an interview where like right. I, I gotta be fucking like with my guards up. No, yeah, like, I don't yeah. know what the fuck I'm gonna get asked. What bullshit you know? am I gonna ask you, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where were you from? How old were you? Right, right. Um, but well, since then, bro. So listen, one of your biggest things, guys. If, if, first of all, please look him up. This some three hundred five. Go to his page. <laughs> you, you're not gonna get enough of his artwork. A graffiti artist who, if I remember correctly, the way you corrected me last time was who has become a fine artist. No, but I, you mix the two. No, I'm, I'm. I just consider myself an artist all around. You know I mean? Period. I, okay. I, I do graffiti, but like I, I just yeah, I create. You know what I'm saying? So nice. I like uh, how you say that. For for a, for a long time, I was kind of like divided, and I like because my mother's like an artist. My you know, I come from a family of artists, so I've always been kind of like traditionally, you know, inclined. But then towards like my almost when I was in fourth grade, my older cousin like he started doing graffiti, even though he was always into art as well. And then at that point, I just, uh, you know, I had kind of like two, like a split personality, bro, where I was like, mm. had like fine art shit moving and I had graffiti shit moving, but it was like one was by like my birth name and the other one was by like this one, you know? And I just felt divided, bro. And at one point I was just like, why why am I fucking acting like I'm two different people and it's one right. person, bro? Let me just merge these two things and then whoever fucks with it, fucks with it. And whoever doesn't, well, fuck them. You know what did, I'm that, did that, did that thought process like what how the way you just said that because that's pretty fucking dope did that literally transpire in your brain or was that just a slow process that unveiled itself naturally and then you just realized it did i think it started happening like little by little you know and then like at one point i was just like yo i like if i could paint like the portrait fine art like you know realism shit mm -hmm. and then i put like the crude graffiti thing on it you know it's just me coexisting bro like because you know i don't have to be these two like this guy that does like fine art on one side and then the right. graffiti shit on the other side. Like I could just like if they could coexist in a piece because they coexist in me, then fucking then people gotta live with it, you know? And they could either like it or fucking hate it. And you know what I'm saying? Like, what well, does it ever bother you if somebody doesn't like your work? Like when you hear about it, maybe whether it's through the grapevine or just you know maybe, maybe there's stiff necks out there. Again, you know the art community, the the, the, art, the artistic people, and then how they view things. They might look at, I don't know how they can look at anything that you do and not think is, is great, Thank but you. sometimes I look at some of this abstract art that's worth fucking millions, and I'm like, that looks like somebody just splashed paint everywhere. That looks like somebody just went, you might appreciate it in a different way because you're an artist yourself. Does it bother you when you hear that some people just don't share the same views that you have on this art? I'm cool with it, man. I mean, like, art's subjective, you know what I'm saying? So they don't they don't have to like what I what I put out, I mean, I don't like a lot of shit that I put out. You know what I mean? So is that a, is that a constant yeah, struggle, really? Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, bro. <laughs> do you, like, is, do are, are artists like that? Are they just really tough on themselves? Where like you know, it's not that good, but fuck it, I'll put it out. I, I just feel that the day I'm like 100 percent happy with some shit I did, like that's the day that shit starts being fun. It stops being fun because then that I'm complacent oh, okay, with the shit. You okay. know what I'm saying? So I like I, that. I like that. I okay. Continue to like improve and build on myself. <clears throat> so. Yeah, man. Like, I don't, I don't mind that people dislike it. What I, what I, what bothers me is when people dislike it for no reason. You know what I'm saying? If you dislike something, I want to know what you dislike about it, why you dislike it. Like, like, does it just make you feel uncomfortable? Because at at that point, then it might be a good art piece. You got me? Just um, be, be, because of what? Because it's, it stirs up those type of people. I I. I think the older I, I get. I mean, that's another great addition to it, right? You, you, do you want everybody to like it? Don't you want to stir something up with some of your artwork? Kind of like, you know, because there's certain messages. Because you, I don't know, I'm kind of making this up. But, like, I think that if I ruffle some feathers as an artist, that's another compliment, too. Especially if I'm putting some type of message out there. You you always share the beauty of our city, Miami. In some shape or form, you're always implementing some just, oh, that's so Miami. That's so Floridian. That's so island like that's so you know hispanic that's so you, you you don't ever miss that in some shape or form you're like all right that's this one right there that without a doubt doesn't matter how intricate how fine art that's something miami is that's this one right there the colors of this well you know i mean some people aren't gonna vibe with it but at the same time challenging those people and making them 
not like it because of certain reasons, I think that's a compliment sometimes. No, nah, I don't. I don't. It doesn't bother me if they dislike it. Um, again, like what bothers me is somebody being like, "I don't like that shit." What What, what do you dislike about it? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Like, I just don't like it. Yeah, like One that. That that's kind of okay. like that. You know, because at that point you just sound like a hater to me. You know what I mean? And I don't yeah. want everybody like like my shit because I mean, there's amazing artists out there who certain pieces I don't like. You know. And that's that's the beauty in art, bro. That it's subjective. Like you know what I mean? Like you, it's all about perspective. Maybe you're looking at it a way that I haven't looked at it, and you're concentrating on something that. So, I'm cool with people disliking it as long as like I get some sort of feedback of why you dislike it. Because maybe it makes right. me notice something that that I didn't pick up, and then like you know I could find a way to improve my work, or you know what I'm saying, or I could just explain like, oh, the reason for this is that this is and that, and then you know like, it's it's just a uh, and like a conversation starts. And we could all grow from a conversation, you know? Of course, uh, without a doubt. I mean, I, I commend you for even saying that. I would even, I would, I don't know, I'd probably be a little more cold-blooded and be like, well, you know, it's cool. Not, not in some asshole way, but it's like, hey, um, you don't like the pink and blue and you don't like, whenever you see graffiti, you think the street, you think the hood, you think something delinquent. So right away, you're never going to vibe with anything that makes you think that. So I'm not trying to satisfy you, but I hear you. I, yeah. I understand, you know, it is what it is. But regardless... Those people are, are don't mean shit because <laughs> the proof is in the pudding. Thank the proof you. is in the pudding, homie. And and on that tip, I want to kind of try to update those listening, whether they've seen the first podcast or not. What were some of your biggest first hits? I know that on a personal level, you probably got shit that just, you know, fucking means the world to you because that was this or because that reaction you got that. I get that. I get that. But, on a, you know, on a, on a real deal popularity level, also like, holy shit, you know, that got a lot of attention. Oh, that was on the news right away. Oh, that one got me 500,000 uh, uh, new followers, whatever it is. When did that first next level of that piece you just did just took you to another level? Man, I'm not sure, man. Like, certain pieces, I think, like, you know, kind of, like, like leveled up, you know? Like, um, I remember that I-95 wall, like, we did, it, like, the the one with the eyeballs on it. Mm -hmm. I-95 with A-hole and the SSK guys. Um I think that one kind of, like, put me graffiti-wise as far as, like, piecing, you know, like, up there. And then that's just not some, like, like subculture graffiti Miami shit, you know? Um, a lot of, like, the street work I was putting in back then, I'm talking about, like, early years, like, fucking 99 through, like, 2005 type shit, you know? Like, the street work, that started kind of getting me, like, recognized. I was We were doing a lot of, like, spots that most people wouldn't have done in ways that people wouldn't have done them. Um, and then... Um, yeah, with the murals that that piece started, you know, the I ninety five wall. I think that kind of got a lot of people like movement, and then um, the first one I think that really started like kicking shit off was the I did a Kimani Marley, which that was at Primo Smoke Shop. Somebody was like, uh, Primo was like, "Yo, I want you to paint a Bob Marley on my wall," and I was like, "Dog, Bob Marley, like I love Bob Marley, but he ain't from Miami, dog. We gotta do Kimani because he's from Miami, you know." Oh. And then with that, that was like I think one of the first portraits I put out there, like. I had done other, like, stuff, but that was, like, one of the first bigger ones. And that, that caused some movement. Then it went from that to, like, D-Wade. D-Wade one kind of, like... What was D-Wade before Trick and Pitbull? Or... I think so, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah the... Because <clears throat> that was kind of, was that was the first years that he was with us, with, with the Heat? No, or, no, 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 no. No, after? No, was, yeah, that, that was actually the first year that he came back. You know what I'm saying? When, because he had gone to Cleveland. I painted, I started painting that the day he came back. When LeBron? No, the day that D Wade came back from Cleveland, because you remember he got traded to Chicago, or he left to Chicago, then he got traded to Cleveland, and then he got traded out of nowhere. I like, forgot all that. Yeah, he came to Miami. So after his holy first shit, game, I forgot all that. That's right. That's real preliminary. Okay. After that first game, that like yeah, I went watched the game, and after that shit, I went out and, and got started on it. How do you get permission to do these pieces? So so okay so because I want people to look these things up. Right now, some of these big ass murals that you can look up, off the top of my head, and I know you you know many more. You have the D Wade, and we're talking about in Miami for those of you guys listening or watching. We got D Wade, and that's Dwayne Wade from Miami Heat. For those of you guys who don't know, yeah. you got Trick Daddy, which is one of Miami's you know most renowned artists, uh, rappers that ever come out of here. You got Pitbull, Mister Three Hundred Five, Mister Worldwide. If you don't know, who the fuck are you? I know right now you killed it when I first, you know, uh, started linking up with you with Udonis Haslam, which is it's crazy to say he almost he almost out 
popularity weighed. Dade County. In Dade County in Miami. Miami Born takes him raised. in. Exactly. He's a Floridian, Miami, and to the grave, 100%. And you did this amazing, amazing mural with Udonis Hasm. So you guys can look all that up in Wynwood. What else have I missed? You just did one with Khaled, DJ Khaled. I've done two with Khaled. I did uh, the Celia Cruz. Am I straight on the mic or am I too backed up? No, no, no you're I'm great. No, yeah, yeah, you're great. Cool. Yeah, um, talk about the Celia Cruz one, and then also talk about the Estefans, because that's also huge, Estefans bro. Estefans, too. Yeah, the Celia Cruz was just me, bro. Like, I just wanted to do something for, you know, like, yo, I'm huge on salsa, man. I, like, you know, I come from a Hispanic background. Tell me you just, dance it. No, no, I got to be a little banged up. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so you hold back, but you know how? I think it has to do with the whole being shy shit. You know okay, what I'm okay, saying? Okay. So if I have a couple of drinks, I, I kind of like... You but know but you do know how, though. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. It's not too left feet. You know what right, 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 right. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, we uh, the Celia Cruz, bro, that one was just like a passion project. Same as the UD. That was like... That, those weren't, weren't com uh, commissioned pieces. That was just me, like... Like I said, man, there's a handful of people from Miami that have done shit from Miami and that have influenced the whole, like, generation what, of... What, what brings that? I apologize for cutting you off, G. What brings that out of you? Because I'm, a, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, the Dolphins just made it to the playoffs. Okay, oh, you saw the Dolphin mural we did. Yes, of course, oh, with fucking Shula. Yeah, yeah, was it seventy two or was it? Dolphins yeah, seventy two. Yeah. Oh man, we were just talking about the cards. And by the way, I got one of those memorabilia cards. I'll, oh, I'll well, show you later. Dope. Yeah, I do. Um, what is it that brought this type of, you know, not fanaticism, but this passion? Because like, you really are. A Miami ass motherfucker, you know, and I love that about you, dog. Because Thanks. as much as yo, I love the outdoors. I love the outdoors. I love isolation. Like when I tell you, I can be alone. <laughs> I can be alone, and but there's just nothing. There's no other state like South Florida. I know it's Florida, but South Florida. There's no other region like South Florida. There's no other city like Miami. What is it that brought all that type of passion out of you? that you just wanted to make it so Miami because for 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 the people listening and when they find out or for those who know you, your skills are, are just next level craziness. But you love to always keep it Miami and South Floridian, dog. Like that's your thing. What brought that out of you? I just think the city built me. You know what I'm saying? It's my biggest influence, bro. So if if I've received so much from the city, it's only right that I give back to the city. You know what I'm saying? And by the city, I don't just mean like the city. And I mean... There's certain people that have influenced me, you know what I'm saying? From, like, the music I listen to, to to the way I carry myself, to, you know what I'm saying? And and even, like, certain role models, man, that, like, I see certain people, and not, not just what they do in the public eye, but what they do behind, like, the scenes, you know? Like, like UD's got, like, he's got a charity, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, he does so much you know? dope shit, bro. Shout out yeah, to you, Donis yeah. Haslam, man, a real um, one. Like the same shit with, with D Wade. He does a lot for the community here and, of and Chicago and all over the place. You know what I'm saying? And these are just like the Stefans. Like, these are people that don't just do shit like in their in their fields, but they give back to the community. You know what I'm saying? And when I whenever I paint people, I try to paint them in a position where they're they're not at like the peak of their careers, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Um I try to paint paint them in a position where it's somewhat more relatable to like the common person you know and by i don't the common person is a terrible fucking name but to the average person oh, you know i get saying? that like, you know on that on that uh hard working level yeah, you know yeah, grinding yeah. going cool. through it the udonis has them uh picture that you chose with the cut eyebrow yeah, man. blood dripping oh or the the stephans you know and like i don't want to repeat shit that, I, that i've said in other interviews you get what i'm saying because i don't want it like it becomes redundant but the, even with these Stefans, bro, like, I picked a younger picture of him, you know what I'm saying, where, like, Emilio's, like, suits all wrinkled and shit, and it's like, dog, that's just dope, bro. He didn't have, like, a, an assistant behind him, like, steaming and shit, you know what I'm saying? So so, so, so after you did that that awesome mural about them, you actually talked to them, you, you you vibe with them, you know, how was that like? How did they feel about when they looked at themselves and, and they did they ask you about, you know, what was it that made you choose that picture? What, made, what, what was it that made you choose to put us on there like that? Yeah. Bro, it was, it was a real cool experience meeting them because it was a, uh, they had a play at the Actors Playhouse, which, yo, shout out to the Actors Playhouse. If people haven't been out there, you been out there? No, I don't think so, bro, no. Fucking go, bro. All right, let's, dope, let's, 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 let's call one out, though. Yeah, we'll yeah, make that happen, fresh, okay? Man. Actors Playhouse, all yeah, right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's real dope, dog, and, and it's crazy that, like, I had I remember going to a field trip at the Actors Playhouse as a kid, and, like, I think I saw Charlotte's Web or some shit. But going as an adult, you know what I'm saying? I went, like, on a date out there, bro, and it was it was such a dope vibe and, like, different thing to do in Miami that, like... Right. Oh, it was crazy because, like, we, you know, we got into the crowd, like, and, and it's all, like, older people. Like, 
me and the chick I was with, you know what I'm saying? We were like the we were the youngest ones. The youngest ones. And yeah. it was such a dope dynamic to be like, yo, this is dope, you know? And like right. we, we enjoyed like it, it was a really dope experience, man. Um so back back to the actors play. So so yeah, so they what they hosted, uh, they had something so they going had, on there. They had an event for uh it was called Get On Your Feet. It was a uh, uh play uh about the the Stefan's uh life or you know. Okay, uh, okay. And bro, it was really dope. So uh for the opening of that I uh, actually did an installation for the Actors Playhouse, and um, and I got to meet the stuff I was there, bro. And they, they were so fucking dope, so humble. Like they were, they were fucking just amazing people, bro. Like I felt like I was talking to like una tia un tío. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Cool, dog. Isn't cool. that awesome too, bro? Because you know, if if, if I don't want to say if you're the wrong person, but if you're somebody who's like overly starstruck, you know, uh, I don't know how to label it. You know, put people on too high of a pedestal. You know, you get that shell shock. You, you know, you act weird, you act funny, and, and then even though you cherish the experience, you really didn't live it out, you know? Um, you didn't come off of that. You, 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 it was just natural, organic, just just smooth. And, Super cool, bro. And they make, they make it that way. It's kind of like, because, you know, I would imagine that you probably could be put in a situation where you would act a little bit funny, but the right people that bring out the right vibes, you know, kind of like, you know, us as well. Yeah. You know, it's just it's just different. You know, it's just one of those things. I, I wonder what it is it about artists. I was thinking about that as you were talking about earlier about um, the depths of of uh, your parents and everything else. What is it about artists that kind of makes them so? They're not. It's not that they're 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 people friendly or not friendly. It's not that they're introverts. Some are, some not. I think it's, I don't know, man, it's, it's kind of puzzling, but I think it's just, they're just so used to getting in their zone, but I'm not I'm not saying that like an artist. Yeah. I'm just saying I think it's, you guys get so in your zone for whatever it is that you do, that you're just used to blocking the world out and getting in this creative fucking, you know, world, and then when, when it's time to come back to reality, it's like, oh, shit, you know, cars and people talking and too many questions, it's like, damn, I, I really like just being here. You know, it depends, man. Cause I, I could be a social person, bro. Like in a social setting, you know what I'm saying? Like right. I, I could be social, um, but I do zone the fuck out when I'm painting, man. Like I, you know, and especially when I'm painting canvases, I like I completely zone out. Um, painting murals, I like the interaction with the people, so that's why I say I'm a social person. Cause like when I'm painting a mural, man, that's part of like what builds a mural. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody walks by, they're like, hey, you should do this, this on that, like, or you know, or, or can can I help you out? You know, and I'm always like, you know, and it's always like an ongoing joke. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, can I help you? And I'm like, yeah, fuck it, come, come, fucking help me. You know what I'm saying? And people don't know what to do. And you put a spray can in their hand. I'm like, yo, just do whatever you <clears> want, <throat> bro. Like, we we could fix it. You just fucking paint. Um, so I, I feel I'm a social person. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. I, I don't really know how to explain that because I think it's it's all individualism. You know what I'm saying? It has to do for for different person. I, I guess, I guess, um, yeah, I was gonna say, I, I guess you. I guess a lot of, of what comes out of you is reactionary. And I don't know if I just made that word up. I, th I think it's a real one, but I, I, think, I think it's reactionary. You know, you're, you're, if your vibe is weird, you're, you're going to get a uh from me, you know? Right. If, 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 if it's mysterious, I'm going to be reserved. If you, you know, yeah. something like that, you know? Uh, it seems like that. It seems like that because, again, I'll never forget our first podcast. I'll never forget when you when we first met. I'll never forget, you know, when you were... When we literally had our first drink, this sounds so awkward as fuck just saying this, but, you know, you were still reserved. Like, you were literally, like, yeah, taking a sip of your drink. I remember it was Taco... Uh, um, it was by Sunset Place. I right, 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 right across from uh, from Bougainvillea. Taco, Taco, Taco Craft. Taco Craft, yeah. Taco Craft. It was there, and it took, like... Two drinks, three drinks, and then we ordered the appetizer, and then you finally turned. It just sounds like we were on a date. <laughs> then you finally turned to me, and you're like, "Yeah." I'm like, "All right, all right, all right." Finally, we we finally broke that. You know, he feels like you know, it, I get it, dog. I get well, it. You know, it's, so it's also because in my head, I'm like, "Dog, I came from like a graffiti, like painting street shit." You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I don't know if I'm talking to a cop. I don't know what the fuck right. is going on here. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. And it was into like, and now like I don't go fuck about none of that shit. You know what I mean? But at that point, which was it was a few years ago, like I still wasn't out there like that. And you know, I was I was a, a, a bit more reserved and a bit more, I'd say like used to my like street ways. You know what I'm saying? If to put it in a fucking certain manner. Um, and I think I was in a situation where I was like, I don't, I don't really know who this person is. Or, right. you know, I had never done a fucking podcast before. I don't. I, I'm pretty sure yours was the first one. 
So yeah, it was at first I was like, why we gotta do why we gotta meet before we meet? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> like yo, well fuck it, you know. Energy, focus, weight loss, recovery, all the things that you need to be able to live a very healthy and productive life. But what if we could be able to offer you all of these things in the comfort and convenience of your home? Flueless Mobile Wellness is the company that would be able to make all of those dreams come true. With enough energy and focus, all of your dreams will become a reality. We are here to serve. All right, but let me cut you off on that, right? So one of the things that you also do, because I'm talking about this passion that you have, you know, because I just love this Miami passion, but you, you also are a proud motherfucking Hispanic. Nice. And by that, you know, because... Uh, I don't know, the wrong people might take that the wrong way. Some ignorant people might not know how to take that. What I mean by that is you really show a lot of loyalty to your culture, to those that help build you up, to those that help you get to where you're at. And I just, I'm one of those people who fucking love that, dog. When I tell you, man, I admire the hell out of that because it's, it's that whole giving back process. I don't believe in karma. I don't know if you remember, but I'm not a religious man. I don't have a, a God deity. But I believe that in the, in, the, in the forces of energy, and when you're just positive like that and you keep throwing this shit back, you know, it will make its way back to you because people are going to realize that awesomeness in you and they want to give it back. You've done it, if not two, maybe three, if not three, maybe four. You've traveled around to different countries, primarily in South America or Central America, yeah, right? Latin America, Latin America. Latin America in general, okay? Walk us through that. You've done murals for different Famous people from Roberto Duran yeah. to I don't know if I don't think you did anything in Cuba for Celia, right? I haven't no. Been in Cuba, no, no, no. Okay, Ooh, that would be fucking oh, dope. Man. Put that, that there. Dope, put that there. We need y'all to help him out yeah. with that. Um, what countries have you visited? What are these things that, you, that you've done? Because I see these videos and it's phenomenal. I see these hoods you're in. You're in fucking low down dirty hoods, and you make the villages come out and they love it. And that's part of the you know this this thing of what art does. It's, it's what art does. It brings people together. It's like stop with all the bullshit. Look at this beautiful thing right here, right? But what's crazy is that you just said the Cuba shit. <coughs> the first fucking you said you mentioned Celia. The first thing that came to mind was uh, Benny More, oh. and that would be fucking dope to paint a Benny More in. in Cuba, dog. Do, do you have people to reach out to for that? That's a tough one, I don't one, know, bro. but I'm going to say it out loud so we can there you know go. That's so what it's on record. About. That's what I'm talking happen, about. You know? um, but yeah, walk us through some of the countries you've been. What was the last one that you went to? I, I know that you've been to Panama. Panama and done, often because I, I got family out there and like, you know, we... You guys did, you actually did a Panama mural, mural run. Festival, yeah, a festival, yeah, right. Trying, we're, dog, we've been talking about making that shit happen again, bro. Hopefully this is the year where like that materializes because okay. the first one was a mission. COVID, COVID obviously set things Yo, back they, a they lot. They were locked down until like last year. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, so okay. they've been locked out for a bit. Um, so hopefully this year we get that shit moving. Um, we've been to Costa Rica. Costa Rica was dope. Did you um, guys did, did you, that's that's my mom's you know country. Costa Rica, that's, yeah, Costa Rica, yeah. Zero, but, so do you guys do a mural over there? Yeah. I pin it. I pin it out there. Yeah, painted a couple of murals out there. How does this happen when countries reach out, or I don't know? Do you have a manager? Like, how does this happen where somehow you get destined to go to these you know foreign countries and, and put up some artwork? No, it's just bro. I enjoy painting, so it's not. It's not always like work. You got me. Like, I'm not driven by money. Um, so a lot of times, like, yo, it's me on my time, and and I want to leave some behind for a, a place that I appreciate. And fuck it, you know what I'm saying? We rock a little wall for them, you know. And a lot of times it's just ego driven. Like sometimes it's just graffiti. You know what I mean? Like where I like sometimes I want to pay, paint pretty shit for everybody else, and other times I want to paint shit for for the homies that appreciate graffiti, and you know, and and it's just the like the graph shit, you know. Um, and to me that's important to have that duality because, like I said, bro, like th these two things coexist within me. So yeah, sometimes we do pretty shit, and sometimes we do graffiti, which I try to do it pretty. You know what I'm saying? But that's all on on a matter of taste or whatever. Well, well, one of the things that you do uh, uh, really well <clears throat> that is probably very unknown, except by the people who are on the receiving end of it, is along with your passion. You know, you you give back so much to to these these, these countries, these cultures, these people that help bring you up. You give back to them. But you go even further than that, homie. And I know this because, you know, I, I see how much you post up about them. I see that you've already talked to me about having a podcast with them. You're always looking out for your people, bro. Right. You're always looking out for your people. I can tell you right now that I remember I don't know them, never met them, 
I started following them, and it was all because of you. Drep, Drep Star? That's my brother, yeah. Right, that's your brother. You know, see, we, you talked to, him, to me about him several times. You showed me his work, all that. You're looking out for him. You've done it several times. I love that. Right. Um, don't tell me. Didi Rock? That's the homie, yeah. Didi Rock, I've been following her. She's got phenomenal artwork. I love her voluptuous, very Latina, you know, all that. Like, I love her artwork about that. Um, shit, man. There's another strong one there that has been common that I can't say right now, but there's, there's a handful of them, man. SK five forty five. You you you're just always looking out. You're always trying to put other people up there too, you know. <clears throat> and I think that's that's a, I don't know, that's a lost. Um, it's not a skill, but it's a lost. I don't know, a, a, a action that people should be doing. It's something that should come out naturally. If you really look back and, and remind yourself that, you know, there's no way you got here by yourself. You know, it's, it's been an influence of people. It's been a team effort. It's been, hey, if you get to shine a little bit, what can you do for the next person? Because it's just, it's in the circle, you know? And, and that's, I think that's a problem we have in Miami, bro. You know what I'm saying? Oh, where, immensely. Where there's, yes. There's a lot of fucking, like, crabs in the bucket fucking mentality. You know what I'm saying? Where they're like, yeah. oh, if I put this homie on, well, then that's going to limit my, like, possibility. And I'm like, fuck yeah. that, bro. Like, yo, if we all climb together, dog, then, like, I'll help you up, you help me up, and then we all fucking build, bro. And, and then that's undestructible. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, um, and again, I think the moment that you feel that putting somebody on is going to fucking limit your growth, then you, you don't you don't deserve any fucking growth. You know what I'm saying? Um, That's how I look at it, at least. And there's a lot of people that have helped me get to where I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, Didi's a homie that I've... I, Bro, I've known Didi since I was, like, 11 years old. You know, same Treps. Treps is, like, one of my, like, original painting partners. Like, dog, go let, right let, for, like, let me try to go the negative route just, just for a quick bit because I know it happens. We got to be realistic about it. Yeah. Have you had um, a couple, hopefully not more than that, experiences where the opposite happened, where it's like, yo, how come you don't, you know, try to shout me out? Yo, let me, let me get in on that project with you. You know, because you're over here doing... I don't even know what you're getting paid. We don't even got to talk about that. But you're doing these big-ass, gorgeous walls that you could do by yourself, but you're bringing in the fam. You're bringing in, you know, Drep, or you're bringing in whoever. You shouted out other people. I apologize for not remembering your names. You bring them in. I know it's you. Right. But you got there. There's always there's always a fucking yin-yang. There's always the other side. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always how do, how do you deal bro. with that, bro? It's, it's but, but no, but, same, oh. but how, do, how do you deal with the people who are like, how come you didn't put me on? You don't, bro. How come? You don't like you got one ignore them go well, some I'm, I'm happy to fucking put on any like i said bro even when like we're well, i'm painting in the street you know what i'm saying and somebody's like hey can i like help you out i'm like yeah fuck it come through help me out you know what i'm saying and and usually it's a joke kind of thing but then you let them do it and then they walk away with an experience you got me so i'm i'm it's very unlikely for me to like shut somebody out you know now i've had to the opposite of like you know what i'm saying the positive which is like fucking people just hating for no fucking reason and that and that that was something that for a long time fucking like affected me directly, you know. Like it, like I was like, damn, what I do to so and so for them to fucking feel a certain way about me? You know what I mean? And um, I've just gotten over that shit, bro. Like, yo, some people just don't like you because of their own personal fucking demons, bro. You know what I'm saying? And and that doesn't have to affect me, bro. You you ride with your amargura and you do whatever the fuck you want to do. That's with that's that, a great way of looking at it, though, bro. Because it's true. You know, it's so hard for people to think that they, they take it personally or they feel they feel um, obligated to have to, you know, adhere to this person. It's like, listen, understand that somebody's not on your energy. You know, yeah, so yeah. It's, it's literally just dodge that shit, walk away from it, whatever. You know, and, uh, and I'm a very open person, dog. Like I'm. To me, like, yo, I was, I was blessed to have parents that fucking raised me, you know what I'm saying, which what I feel is the right way to, like, be. And if somebody has an issue with me, I'm always down to fucking discuss it, you know what I'm saying? And we could like, yo, like, if I did something that I'm not aware because a lot of times, like, like yo, reality is your perspective, you know what I'm saying? So if I did something that maybe I wasn't aware of because I was paying attention to some other shit and somebody's bothered by that, like, then step to me and have a conversation about it. And I might apologize or I might explain why I moved a certain way, you know what I'm saying? But... If, if you're not mad enough to fucking address me or woman enough or whatever the fuck, human enough to address yeah, me, yeah. well, then you're just going to have to stay angry at whatever the fuck you're angry at because we can't even fucking discuss it, you know? And that's 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 how I feel about, like, sour people, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, if we can make it right, I'm always down for, like, making negative shit positive, you know? And if you're not willing to take that step, well, then fuck it. It is what it is. Well, that's good, man. That's, I mean, that's a great attitude, you know? You're willing to entertain it? 
but you're also willing to just shrug your shoulder and be like, man, that's your misery, you know? Because the truth yeah. is, misery, you know, they, they want company. Right. And that's pretty much what you alluded to earlier. It's like these people just try to drink you, they, they try to bring you down, you know? You, you have to you have to recognize that. I think that comes with age only because it, com- because it comes with experiences. Once you've had enough, enough experiences, you will either know, you know, and, and mature from it and make better decisions or you'll succumb to it and just... You know, get sucked up into it. A lot of negativity doesn't come from a negative place, bro. It's just all perspective. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and that's something else that I've, like, taught myself or I've learned throughout. Not taught myself, <laughs> something I've learned. You got me? Like, Experience. Of, yeah, yeah, a lot of times the people that, like, feel a certain negative way towards you, bro, like, it, like it's not, it's not that you. they're... It's, no one is not dumb either, bro. It's not that they're, like, they're bad people or anything. It's just, yo, this, this is their perspective. And you know what I'm saying? And, like, I can't be angry at whatever they feel, dog. It's whatever. You know what I mean? Something that one thing that we, you and I, I remember we had a, uh, it wasn't a disagreement. I just remember that I posted um, about having a podcast with a police officer. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> and you were real, you know, opinionated about it. And I was like, damn, G, what's that about, bro? Like, you, you know, you a fucking, you're an awesome dude, man. Me and you, we coming real close. You why, got, you, why you, you talking like, memory, dog. <laughs> yeah, you know? But it was understandable, you know. And, and then, and then. You literally recited that it, it was it that's how much it impacted you. There was three, probably more, but there was two or three incidents that you remember so vividly that you told me, "Hey man, you know, I was really, you know, big about supporting the blue and this and that and I got friends with that 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 but this one time that boom, you told me this no, I, I'm gonna correct you. I've never Crazy said story. I've been big on supporting the blue. I respect everybody that does okay. their job, you know what I'm saying? But man, I've had I've had really fucked up bad yeah. experiences with with police officers. You know what I'm saying? And and I don't know if it was due to like gr- growing up in a bad area and being young and Hispanic. You know what I'm saying? But bro, I've, I've had several. Which if I deserve something, I'm gonna eat it. You know what I'm saying? Like fuck it. Like you right. know, like I deserved it. But I've I've had several fucking instances where like bro, like it was straight bullshit. Like you know, me coming out of high school, bro, I had a cop who. I was in high school dropping off a girl in school, and a cop fucking pulled me over. You know, I was whatever, dog. I was fucking young, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had a nice car, whatever the fuck. And um, I got pulled over, and the guy started asking me questions about his wife. Like, why was I in his neighborhood? Like, why? what the fuck was I doing there? And I was like, yo, I was dropping off so-and-so. You know, she lives in this neighborhood. Next thing I know, bro, I'm, in the, I'm fucking my hands up behind my bumper in the car. I got two homies in the car. Guy fucking talking about, yo, spread your legs. I'm like, dog, my legs are fucking spread. Back then, we used to wear, like, baggy-ass jeans. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> fucking, I'm like, dog, my legs are spread. I don't know what else, like, what else you want from me, bro. Kick, kicked my leg, dislocated my fucking knee. Grabbed, like, I had long hair and shit. Grabbed by the hair and was like, yo, unless you want to see your fucking teeth imprinted into the back of my bumper, you're going to tell me what the fuck you were doing by my house because I've seen you looking at my wife. Dog, till this day, I have no fucking idea who that guy's wife was. You know what I mean? And that was a fucking police officer. Had another police officer fucking arrest me, um, falsify a police report. You know what I'm saying? How, lo- how long from the first to the second? First one, I was probably like 16, 15. That's the other shit, dog. Like, now me as an adult, bro, I look at 15-year-olds, there's no fucking way I'd put my hands on a 15-year-old on a job. Yeah, like yeah, that. exactly. You know exactly. Especially like, in, in a, somebody in that position. Dog, like, it's like, so, and these are the people that are here to, like, serve and protect. And again, right. bro, like, I'm... I'm a strong believer on not one person represents a whole team because if that was the case, we'd all be fucked out here. You know what I'm saying? But, yo, I've just had these fucking really fucked up experiences, bro. Maybe it was because of the way I looked. You know what I'm saying? But, like, there's no fucking reason to, like, to treat a fucking... How long have you had this beer for? A long time since, like, middle school. <laughs> <laughs> what? Not middle school. Not like this. You know what I'm saying? But, but it, was had, like, grow- it was already growing. You were one of those, you know, he's advanced. Yeah. yeah. He got all kind of hair in his nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. Listen, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Obviously. No, I, yeah. And and not to like, you know what I'm saying. I've had. But believe me, that paid a row. Police reports falsified. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like fucking like or like they. Oh, you're not gonna sign it. Fuck it. We'll sign it for you. You know what I'm saying. Like like, dog. All I'm asking for is a fucking phone call so I can call my mother. So you know what I'm saying. Like, um, from that shit to fucking dog. I've been painting. I've been doing a fucking mural, a legal fucking mural. My mother was painting the background on it. And we had fucking, we got surrounded by fucking cops. They pulled out their guns on us, dog. Thank God my mom was in there that day, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because my attitude probably would have been a whole lot fucking different. And, like, how the fuck are we doing a legal fucking beautiful thing, bro? And you guys fucking surround a wall with us. You know what I'm saying? Like, they surrounded the spot. 
guns drawn and pull out guns dog. and when they're like they're like oh get the fuck on the floor dog and they're like yards away we see the guns out Jesus. and we're like fuck we all get on the floor and they're like get up we all get up and they're all like oh get the fuck down and we all get down and they're like who the fuck are you talking to you know what i'm saying next thing we know bro when cuz we the the spot we had it was locked like we had locked locked it back up um they come back around and they're like um at the end of it they're like so none of you guys got a gun we're like no nah. they're like why are you painting this na- in this neighborhood without a gun and we're like imagine had we had a fucking gun how this shit would have turned out right you know right, what i'm saying like right. And and these are the fucked up experiences, bro. And and fuck it, even to put it out there, bro. Like, dog, my house was broken into. Did I told you about? I told you about this shit. No, I don't think so. My house was broken into, right? <clears throat> now, um, I had a roommate at the time. Like, I'm not one to fucking call the cops, <laughs> which just sounds terrible. But like, I've just had so, so many negative like experiences. Like, right. whatever, they took shit. Like, what? Like, my Xbox is gonna get replaced, and my laptop's gonna like I shouldn't come back. So fuck it. You hear me? Um. I was staying with a homie at the time. He called the cops, bro. And when he hit the cops, they come. They fingerprint the, ho- the whole house, whatever, whatever. Uh, months later, I was trying to, like, I was trying to do, like, a business investment in Panama. My neighbors started calling me, like, yo, Gio. Oh, boy. There <laughs> you know, we go. They're like, yo, fucking, um, uh, the cops are out here looking for you. And I'm like, the fuck? You know, like, maybe it has to do with my the burglary from my house. Um, Long story short, bro, they I ended up getting arrested. Because they mixed up the evidence from my home's burglary with another home's burglary. And obviously, it's my home, so my fingerprints were in the shit. You got me? And when they mixed up the evidence, I ended up getting fucking jammed up for a fucking, uh, like, burglary. burglary. Yeah. And not just that, but because I was out of town, while they were looking for me, like, trying to, like, on some business investment shit, um, they thought I was, like, a flight risk. So they fucking ended up having FAT. I found out, you know what FAT is? No, not for, FAT. First time I fucking heard that term, dog. Felony apprehension team. They're like the fucking U.S. Marshals for like local police. They, but they're not federal. It can't be federal. No, no, no. Okay. That's felony apprehension team. Even something. though probably feds probably use them, but okay. Dog, I, I had those motherfuckers looking for me. You know what I'm saying? I got jammed up. My bond was like a whole lot of fucking money, like ridiculous. Like I know all over that bullshit, really, bro. Because they mixed up the fucking evidence of my house with some other shit. I went, turned myself in, because I don't know, like, they were going to my business and fucking fingerprinting, uh, I mean, not finger, uh, pulling out my employees or whatever the fuck, you know, to the point where I hit them up, and I was like, what the fuck is, like, if I got to turn myself in, like, what I said about the issues, like, if I got to address them, like, I'll address it. If right. I got to turn in myself for some shit I'm not aware of, like, yo, I'm walking in, you know what I'm saying? I want my lawyer, I want my father, bro. I ended up getting jammed up, bond high as fuck, lawyer fees high as fuck, all this crazy shit. While I'm locked up, dog, they go back in my crib. And they jump the fucking other cops, jump out, no warrant, no fucking nothing, open the fucking front door of my house, pull out guns on my homie who happened to be at the crib with another homeboy looking for me. You know what I'm saying? When you see that kind of shit, bro, and again, bro, this isn't like I'm not generalizing towards all cops. I'm sure there's fucking plenty of good cops. And hopefully the but ones you've given up on you've given oh, up on the system. I'm saying hopefully the ones that hear this shit don't put it out against me now because I've like commented publicly on shit that has to do with. But you cops. should, you should, and you shouldn't feel ashamed of it. Nah, but dog, I've it happens. Done, I've done it, bro, and my DMs have get, gotten filled up with fucking cops, like like on some. Sh- you know what I'm saying? To a point where I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like, dog, like weird shit, bro. You know? So again, like I've met plenty of good cops. You know what I'm saying? They're not all on the same shit. But the handful of fucking bad ones and the bad police work that goes a dog. This is a crooked ass fucking city from the from regular people to fucking the top. You know what I'm saying? Right. And there's a lot of great people in this fucking city at the same right. time, which is why I pay homage to the fucking good ones. You know? Yeah. But there's there's shit goes sideways, bro. And once you go through these experiences, it's really fucking hard to trust. Yeah, people, of you know course. Yeah, it's it's like a form of PTSD. It's just it's just something that's traumatic to you that you don't forget. You know, and then then you have. You know, if I'm going to say it in some weird way, it sounds insulting, but it's not. I'm not trying to insult you. You're going to feel sour. You're going you, you're gonna to be fucking like, nah, dude, I went th- I went through this too many times. I, I I know they exist. I know the good ones exist, but goddamn, man, for the most part, man, shit, I'm sour. I don't fucking, you know. And I feel you on that. I do. I, I really do. It's just, um, and, and again, it's not towards all of them, though. Like hopefully, you know what I'm saying? Like I know there's people trying to make a difference, and people like like it's all humans, bro. You got good ones and you got bad ones. But as far as that conversation went, I was like, you know what I'm saying? Like I just my personal shit, you know. You know, I don't know if you remember. I've been. This is gonna sound horrible saying this right now. This shit went sour as fuck right now. No, not at all. Not at all. No, not at all. I, 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 um, 
actually the opposite, bro, because I, I, I love that, you know, okay, look, when somebody like you is as passionate as they are, I love to hear certain topics as to what, when that passion hits harder than normal, right? right. So you only voice out on your Instagram only certain topics, only certain things, right? You don't even, you, you do voice about unlawful shit when it comes. You haven't done it in a minute, but I've already known that about you, and when you have, you have. It's because I got certain homies that are like, yo, you're doing too much. You got to calm down with that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, well, it's not, it's not you, you know, it's a good advice, but at the same time, really, you know, like you have the right to do what you want to do. But if somebody's going to talk to you like a, like a business manager, like your manager, somebody's going to tell you, hey, are you trying to gain or lose, right, right, right. you know, viewers or potential this, this, and that? Because if you say too much, da, 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 da. the greatest example right now, even though it might not be the most uh, – whatever you want to call the example to use is Kanye. Right. You know, um, if somebody was in his ear, a, 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 a lot of what he said was a lot of accuracy on, on, on you know, on, on the, the, the Jewish involvement and the ownership oh, and this, this, I'm, and that. I'm going to get into But that. the Semitism, oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to get into that. No, yeah, but the Semitism, I don't want to get into that because that that's where he went too far. But who owns what, this, this, and that, you can just look it up. It is true. But for him to go that far and yeah, say bro, but I'm, and it, say it in that far, it, he didn't. The only reason what, I'm gonna get into it is because I'm Jewish. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you knew it. No, but I don't think I, I remember that. No. And yeah, my mother's Jewish, which makes me Jewish. My my father's Catholic. You know what I'm saying? And we got we got yo like there's this fucking like weird connotation, this weird like fucking um. I don't know, bro. Like where where people assume that every fucking. Jew is fucking rich and wealthy and controls the fucking world, yo. If that was right. the case, dog, I'd be fucking making it rain out here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I grew up broke as fuck in a Hispanic <clears throat> family. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it, it, they talk about, oh, these white Jews, like, you know, and, and it has nothing to do with race because Ju Judaism is a religion, you know? That's like saying, like, like, oh, you, you're from a certain race because you're Catholic. You get me? So I see, when, when I hear that kind of shit coming out from Connie, who's a fucking ridiculously influential person, dog. Right. And um, worldwide, and, and like huge, yeah, you know, and he's like, Oh, because the Jews, this and that, and that. It's like, dog, like my nieces are Jewish, so now my nieces, because you fucking influence some ignorant fucking kid in the neighborhood, yeah, you know what I'm saying, that doesn't know shit about shit. My nieces might have to deal with some of the backlash because yep. of you that you fucking, you know what I'm saying, you yep. have this fucking platform to speak on, and again, bro, like, especially, you know what I'm saying, I, I don't want to get in like racial shit or nothing, bro, but like. Kanye as a black man, you got what I'm saying? Saying this kind of shit after the fucking horrendous shit that like black people have been through in this nation. You would think he'd be more a little bit more yeah, uh, understanding yeah, of, dog, of like what it is to the heart, isolate a race. Dog, the, there's a reason why my fuck why why I'm Jewish, but I'm Hispanic. Cause dog, World War II had a whole lot of fucking people come from Europe, migrate to fucking Latin America. You got what I'm saying? Right. Like, so and it, and this shit wasn't like eighteen hundreds. This shit was fucking like 1950 right you know what i'm saying right so if this shit so recently happened how you how you out there fucking like like spreading hate you know what i'm saying amazing like and, and that's that's a flaw fucking we have as artists you know what i'm saying so i'm not even mad at kanye for it because because sometimes i get passionate about shit like i just and you, you know and about you blurt the it out and you say stupid shit you know what i'm saying but but I think with withholding the like places of, of fucking power. Which I, is, I was gonna say the same thing. You have to know when you when you yeah. There you, you, know there you go. There you go. Like you Spider Man shit, man. Right, with, 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 with ultimate power comes ultimate responsibility, yeah. man. Like you have to know how to govern that shit. And if right. if you feel that way, cool. You have the right to. If, if you it might it be accurate, yeah. You're gonna have your naysayers, your this, your that, whatever, whatever. Where's your power of influence? Oh, then you need to just keep that between you and those who are comprehensive and those who are willing to debate it in whatever shape or form, but not to do that. But listen, I'm not sticking up for that motherfucker. All right. <laughs> Understand that shit by a long shot. But it's crazy to see that he pulled his trigger. He feels passionate about it. He feels like this was his, again, talking to somebody who's not a godly believer. He literally feels like, God wanted him to do this. This was his, he was supposed to do this because otherwise nobody else would to be in a, uh, somebody in his position. And if you hear of a lot of the different crazy interviews, he goes way deeper into this I mean, type of shit. Like, bro, he's talking about Jews and like Jesus was a Jew. 
You got what I'm saying? So right. if that's the person you're following, like how you... How yeah, you in his eyes, is, is not, you, I you guess. Go, you got what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it's it's not... In his eyes, it's it's a fact. Like, Jesus was Jewish. You got what I'm saying? That, like, he, he went by the Old Testament, which is what Jews do. And really, when you break down... Fuck, I hate talking about religion. Like, you know what I'm saying? All this kind of shit. Yeah, we're not getting but, into it like but that. When, yeah. you, when you break down, like, Judaism, Catholicism, like, Christianism, like, even... Dog, like, they all go back to the Old Testament. You got... I had a had a crazy discussion and again i'm not like a religious person i don't go fuck like i i enjoy learning about religions because i like it's just interesting to me you know like even with like the ancient alien shit and you start learning about like other weird like not weird but just like um religions i'm, I'm unaware of and they're strange right 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 i just haven't been around it but when you learn about those things and you start like you know it's just dope to me um but recently I had a conversation with a rabbi and asked him, and I was like, man, you know, like, everybody talks about, like, the the apocalypse and you know, all this. What happens after the second Messiah comes? You know, you know about that? Like, the second Messiah coming, and then it starts the apocalypse and all that. Mm. Second coming of the Messiah. Like Guardians of the Galaxy? Part nah, two? I don't, I don't know. About that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, basically my whole question was, like, yo, when, when the, second, uh, the, sec, the second coming of the Messiah r- uh, arrives or whatever, then what happens to, like, all these religions? Because now you all acknowledge one Messiah. So, right. So do How do you adjust know? everything else? No, it's just like, so now that, because the difference between Catholicism and Judaism is that the Jews don't believe in, from my understanding, I'm probably going to as fuck on this shit, is that they don't believe in uh, Jesus as the as the Messiah, right? So, but when the second coming comes, if everybody acknowledges the same Messiah, all these religions turn into the same thing. Like, they all unite. You know, and when I like when I asked him that, I was like, "Is that what's supposed to happen?" And he was like, "I never thought about that." But yeah, you know what I'm saying. So even now, like we're there's all this comp, and th- honestly, that's what I hate about fucking religion that it creates more conflict than it unites. And I think something like godly should just unite more than divide. You know, um, and it goes back to fucking Connie dividing over fucking over religion. Like, yeah, shit's to me. I respect him as an artist. I I think as a fucking pol- political fig- figure or someone with power, he's fucking ignorant as fuck. But as an artist, mad respect to that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like that you said that like that. You hit it hard. You work out hard. But do you recover as hard as your exercises? Recovery is the number one thing that keeps most athletes from reaching the next level. Here at Flueless Mobile Wellness, we want to help you become the animal, the champion, the winner that you are. Recover right. Recover with flueless mobile wellness. All right, so let me, let, let me let me switch a little bit of what we're talking about, right? We know that Trump, religion, all this, they all play a role in what's going on, the decisions we make. They, they all influence, you know, to think a certain way, officers. Um, it's difficult to be in these people's positions, you know? It, it, it really is, you know? I'm not defending cops. There's a lot of pieces of shit in every... Race, gender, uh, occupancy, career, you know, there's just always somebody who's misrepresenting that category that you're trying to represent, you know. Oh, people from Miami are so superficial. They're so stuck up. They're so this. That's got to bug the shit out of you because you a Miami-ass motherfucker, and you're not none of that. You're none of that. Oh, people from, you know, and it just keeps going and keeps going, right? Bro, I don't don't see race. I don't see color. I don't see... None of that shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're all humans, bro. And I think if we all accept each other as humans, then we just we move forward, bro. You know, like, this whole, like, oh, you got to do this for so-and-so and this for that, so-and-so. Like, no, nah, bro, like, as, as long as you're a good human, bro, then you're progressing. The moment that you stop stop wanting to fuck with somebody because of this and that, like, I think that's that's a, a character flaw. You know what I'm saying? Like, dog, I have, I have friends of all races. I have friends of all religions and if anything else that's the beautiful thing about it like that that just helps you grow as a human because you got different perspectives different cultures different flavors you know what i'm saying even in the cooking dog you know what i'm saying like what's what's better than trying some like food you've never fucking tasted some new right right you know what i'm saying right like that's that's a beautiful fucking thing bro and that's that's what i enjoy about traveling going to like different countries you know uh and and honestly i think I i was talking to a homie recently about this about like graffiti Graffiti is one of the few, um, I'm gonna say subcultures or whatever. Okay. Where like, dog, we're united by art, by only art, by creativity. Like, I, I make a phone call to, I might not know anybody in Africa, but guaranteed I got a homeboy, I know somebody in Africa, somewhere in Africa, you know what I'm saying? 
And I make a phone call, and I'm like, yo, I'm going to, I don't know, man, South Africa or Zimbabwe or whatever. You know any writers out there? I know so-and-so. Now, I end up in that country, dog, and the only thing that unites us is art. And <laughs> we might not even speak, like, bro, I've painted murals with people. I don't even speak right. the same language. Right, 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 right. That's, that's a beauty, and, and we, we could say graffiti, or we can even take it further and say hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've heard, like... I just want to say it's art, dude. Because even hip hop is art. Right, right. Graffiti is art. It's all art. It's well, how would you but, but that, okay? But, how would you define art? If we were gonna put art very generalistic as fuck, like not physically drawing, painting, whatever. What is art? Is it not a, a way a of form, expression? A form of expression. Okay, so is it rap art? And, and that's why I was telling you earlier, like when you were talking about like, oh, um, somebody liked their artwork or not, you know, like how how does that make you feel? And I was like, well. The young, like in my younger years, I always thought that art was about um technique. Like I, I, I get really technical with my work, you know. Like your stroke, your lines, I your your port, bro. And I haven't done it, but I could paint a portrait down to the pores if I wanted to, if I had, like, okay. you know, if I'm patient enough. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's a goal of mine. I won't point to just show, you know what I'm saying? If okay, skills, okay, you know, exclusive. Y'all heard it here <laughs> first. But um, but to me, that that was good art in my younger years. Now, good art is uh something that makes you feel a certain way that's why i was telling you if like if i paint a piece and you tell me you dislike it because it makes you feel uncomfortable well then it's making you feel something and if art makes you feel a certain emotion then it's if it's strongly enough then it's good art to me you get what i'm saying um and back back to the let's backtrack to the the whole like graffiti movement it's not art in general because i even though i'm sure there was an elite group of like artists that at one point were like oh so-and-so is an artist you fly it from like i don't know Frida Kahlo could fly to like i don't know somewhere else to meet pollock jackson pollock or some shit you know because they were just in that elite group like well, graffiti is different bro like you don't you don't even have to be at that like elite group to like link up with like-minded people and like yo i could literally go anywhere in the fucking world right now and link up with with a homie's homie and paint and, and we might not even speak the same language we just connect through art you know and and that's a beautiful fucking thing. On, on that note, what what is it that you have planned going forward? What what is what is a, a a new destination that's coming? I mean, you you've been to several places. Uh, we we name drop some of them. What's in the works? What's in the works? I mean, with I mean, even if it's if it's uh, nationally, because I know that you're doing that too now. You know, you got people asking for your presence and all kind of different things. I thought Doug was going to be involved in one of them. I'm not sure that went through. Oh, we're trying to do a tour with Doug, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right, the tour. So, um, yeah, but reg regardless, you got a lot of shit going on, you know. That's, that's why I'm, I'm blessed to have you here today, man, because I know you're busy as fuck and you travel a lot. What What are these destinations? What's coming up? We gotta hit up Europe this year, bro. Europe. Yeah, we gotta. Yeah, I, I haven't been to Europe yet. It's Give me some specifics, though. Is there any specifics or not yet? No, nah, nothing written in stone. Definitely hitting up Spain, hitting up Italy, uh, Ireland. You know, got a few homies out there that like to stay coming out here. We gotta, you know, pay it forward, go out there, go to the cities, learn about their cultures. You know what I'm saying? And okay. Just expand. Um, that's definitely bucket list shit. Um. Yeah, it's big bucket list shit. We gotta make it out there, you know. But leave, no, leave, but leave a little bit of Miami out in Europe. But no, no actual project projected yet. You don't have anything nah, lined up yet, nah, you know. Nah, that, nah. that that's very right now. So how is that working with you? There's some like, how do these projects come about? Is just people's managers? Is it is it actual project managers reaching out to you? It's like, hey, we saw your work. We saw this. Or are you reaching out to anybody? Do you have a manager who's reaching out to anybody? Nah, no this is all organic as yeah. fuck. People just keep reaching out to you, yeah. or you're doing it on your own passionately. Right. I mean, I you know I've been blessed to like stay consistently busy. I, I you know and through word of mouth, bro. If you do good work and you and you deal right with people, you know what I'm saying. And you're punk. Something I've noticed, bro, is that like a big issue artists have is that we're responsible as fuck. And I'll throw myself in that shit. You know what I'm saying. But I when I realized that shit, I started trying to like make edits in myself and like how I conduct myself. You know what I'm saying? You tell me to be somewhere on at a certain time, I'll be there. I'm gonna try to be there a little bit early. Miami traffic's a fucking bitch. Yeah. Like, so <laughs> Heads up for all of you guys <laughs> ready to book them. No, nah, but for the most part, most part, you know what I'm saying? I'm making an effort to show up before. You got me? And like, um, and yeah, man. As long as you, you know what I'm saying? You conduct yourself accordingly. You respect for other people's times. And and yo, you give it your your all, like people, you know, you do good business. Good business, is good business, bro. Why why not fuck with it? You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's pretty much it. So majority of my shit comes through like word of mouth. You know, people see my work. You know, um, there's 
and again passion projects man like it's not about it's it's not all about money for me you know like there's shit that i just want to do because i want to do it and and that's what art is art is passion you know like i don't need to fucking like wait for a paycheck to like do what i want to do like nah bro if i feel this is going to be impactful and it's going to make me feel better and make other people feel better fuck it we're gonna run it you know what i'm saying so that's that's that my bro i'll tell you what though man you know um the the influences you have you know it's it's immense and um 20 the, the these early 20s as in, in regards to 2020s right. have been very challenging for all of us we got covid we got everything that came because of covid we got bouncing back from covid there's there's a lot of craziness that has happened in the 20 2020s but here we are in 2023 2022, it seemed like you were just fucking rocking out, sorry to say, with your fucking cock out, bro. Like you were just killing it on so many levels. You did so many projects. Walk us through 2022 real quick. Tell us, you know, remind us, you know, the things you did because I know you were at, at the um, the art festival, um, uh, Basil. Basil, yeah. Basil. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. That's no, all good. <laughs> excuse me. Basil. Um, you did the uh, Stefan's mural. Right. You did... Um, the Udonis was before. No, was way before yeah. Um Khaled, the new Khaled was recent. West uh, K, yeah. Yeah. You also went to another country again I or no? Out, yeah, I was in Panama. I was in Costa Rica this year. Um what else what else? Uh painted Arizona this year. Arizona, yeah. that's right. You went to Arizona. How many if you if you were to I mean, obviously you, any any project is a project, but in general, even if you miss the small ones, like how many projects did you got no clue, bro? No, you can't rough it up, no. No, no. It's, uh, I got a homeboy asked me that yesterday. He was like, "Yo, how many murals you got?" Uh, Drups, Drups asked me yesterday. He was like, "Yo, how many murals you got in Miami?" I was like, "I got no fucking idea, bro. No clue." So because what do you got? It's, what do you... it's never been like a accounting game for me. You know what I'm saying? Is is more? You now I've I've said it before where like, like yo, completing a a project, not necessarily like a mural, but completing a project is is I get this like I don't necessarily enjoy the painting process. It's just the completion of it. You know what I'm saying? So I relate it to like a drug where it's like this this quick high. You know what I'm saying? Like, of course. Yo, we oh, bust my ass to fucking get the project done. And then once it's done, it's just like, yo, it's like you got a little rush. But the more you do and the fucking more they come, like, dog, the, the shorter that high gets. You know what I'm saying? So I I think that's part of like the drive. You know what I'm saying? So like, you look for it more? Yeah, yeah. For the high? Trying to do bigger, cooler, better fucking things. You know what I'm saying? And do you ever give tell yourself... For whatever reason, I'm not saying to get better or to like, like you know, a lot of times when people you know tell me the things you're thinking, <coughs> excuse me, I think you know fighters, I think fighting MMA, and I think, um, man, you gotta take time off sometimes, you know, you 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 put all this work into it, but you have to let you know, you know, don't burn out, don't burn out, and, and it's an extreme comparison, but do you do that as a, as an artist, you know, because I mean. D, I'm fucking seeing you everywhere, and then you're getting you're not just everywhere like at home. You're like getting pulled to downtown, to Wynwood, to out of country, to a project that's coming up. To you know, you know the the break is is painting, bro. The the break like you know so really yeah. So sometimes like that's you know, the piece we'll, from society. We'll paint a mural, bro, and then the mural. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, I'll be like, yo, you know what? I need a break. So then I go and I do a graffiti piece. You know what I'm saying? And then yo, I need a break from that. And then I'll paint like a canvas, and then. Like, it's, I just enjoy what I do, bro, so it's not really, like, it doesn't feel like work. It's just, I enjoy it, you know? And and I'm blessed to be in a position where I don't got to paint bullshit that I don't enjoy painting, you know? Like, I turn shit down all the time, or I pass it to homies, and it's, you know, it's 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 a good place to be at where, you know, like, fortunate to have enough work coming in where, like, I could do what I want to do, and I could put the homies on and just keep moving, you know? Let me put you on the spot real quick. Do you ever smoke weed? No. God damn. <laughs> You might do some fucking Picasso AI AI type shit, bro. Think so? You never know, you know. <laughs> why not just why not just fucking test it? Just give yourself a canvas. I'll I'll just uh, like just I, a simple canvas of whatever, four by six. I don't know what the fuck they are. And just say, you know what? No one's around. Don't have nobody there. So you don't feel no pressure. Just, you know what, I'm gonna smoke a little bit. Gee, don't get high high. That's just wrong with people when they get high. They like they get zooted. They get stupid high. Like no, don't get high high. Don't don't drink don't drink two cups of coffee. Just drink one. 
you know, and then feel that rush. So, you know, just drink, just smoke a little and I, I, see what it does for you. I have a shit where, like, I like to be in control. You know what I'm saying? You still so, in like, control, bro. Even when I drink, like, I make sure, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll drink. I'll have some hey, water. Some water. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, some best shit. There you go. That might be, like, back at, like, PTSD shit from like we were talking about right, 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 right. Days dog, like we had a lot of static. You gotta be on point where the fuck you're at. You know what I'm saying? So you know not to get sloppy. I might have to do with that, but who knows, yo? Maybe at some point I'll let loose a little bit, and you know, fuck it. Listen, listen, you're you're, now I'm chilling, man. You're 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 already a beast organically. I I just think I'm so laid back, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't want to get even more laid back. You know what I'm saying? Like so. I don't want to seem like a, like I'm fucking trying to sell you weed, you know. <laughs> so it's a black people, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> people are gonna hit me up like, "Yo, yo, you got that good shit?" No, no. I just I seen your skills. I know how good you are, and I just wonder. I literally wonder. Damn, what if, what if we calm down? Because I know your brain is fucking. Sucks. I know it. I know it is. What if we calmed it down and took it to another level of calmness? What creativity will come out of you because you're already a creative genius. You feel me? This is this is where and again I, I sound like somebody who's fucking trying to, you know, promote and I kinda am. I'm just saying Yo, I'm, I'm all for it, bro. I'm all for it, fucking marijuana smoking, dog. You yeah, oh well, yeah, I know like, you never bro, been against you, that like you got, that. you got so many fucking people that like I I mean like yeah, I've had edibles before, you know what I'm saying? Like, um and whatever. Fucking dog, like I would never tell you to have an edible the, and, and, and in pain, by the way. No, nah, I'm just saying the the in pain. You said in, in pain and spray oh, and do anything. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. not with an edible. No, I mean, see, like, that's the thing. That's too. That's too much. It's just certain shit, bro. Like, like I mean, you know, we talked about the whole shit. How I like I went through cancer and right, like, chemo. Right. Dog, one of the few things that fucking helped me out were the edibles, bro. All right, so let's you know, pause on that. I didn't want to do it unless you did it. You just yeah. fucked up right now. No, I'm gonna fuck. We talk about. All right, cool. So, right. I've known that about you, but you surprised me about that after our podcast. I didn't know that you went through this. <laughs> it's all good. Just little um, bleeps. <laughs> what? What? Tell us a little bit about what is it that happened that that snuck up on everybody? Because you you didn't disclose it to your friends. You were no, very you were very encerrado, which means like you didn't tell you know, many people about it. What is it that happened? You know, really quick that gave you a different perspective on life. I was just blessed that it happened during the pandemic, and I, and though even though the whole thing, I I kind of considered it a blessing. You know, because it gave me perspective in life. Um. But long story short, bro, fucking, I was fucking diagnosed with cancer, had an ER surgery, fucking went through the whole chemo shit, bro. Um, and I just did, like, again, I, I said I was blessed to happen through the, the pandemic because so many people were absent to, towards each other throughout the pandemic. You know what I'm saying? Me and you going missing right now, people are going to start hitting us up, like, yo, where you at? What's up? Uh, you know? Right. During the pandemic, it was locked away. So, like, nobody really asked questions. Nobody said shit. And honestly, bro, like, I didn't really, like, it's uncomfortable to answer, like, I didn't have answers to shit that I was going through. You know what I'm saying? So why am I going to, like, want to, like, either worry people or... or have When you didn't even know exactly. Right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, or have uncomfortable conversations with people that, like, some might have not been genuine. It was just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like, yo, I'd rather go through this on my own, my family, and went through it, and blessed enough to, like, have a very supportive fucking caring loving family you know what i'm saying it's weird to go, go from feeling like a strong family member to like the weakest family member the, the so what'd you what'd you get hit with real quick i mean we don't gotta go into details but i i it, bro it was uh pretty much like lymphatic you know what i'm saying um uh, and and it was somewhat advanced um and yeah bro I, I went to three rounds of chemo fucking lost all my hair all my like beard which is fucking that shit was like traumatic you know what i'm saying like, you've been rocking the beard since forever. you're like 16 it's <laughs> like that it's like what the fuck um but the blessing out of that bro is that you realize how fucking fragile life is you know what i'm saying and how um how bro everything like even like yo like i took fucking not take not drink, not being able to drink water for like you know what i'm saying like that's shit that we take for granted drinking like drinking for a certain point like i couldn't drink shit you know so when you come out of that experience where you literally, like, dog, you have, like, the weakest members in your family. You go from being the strongest to them taking care of you. You know, like, literally, my niece is taking care of me. Right. Um, to drinking water, like, you know what I'm saying? You take that shit for granted to fucking everything, bro. When you come out of that on top, you just feel so fucking blessed and so grateful for fucking everything. You know what I mean? Like, for... Did you feel like that flipped a switch in you? Fuck yeah. Yeah? Definitely fucking turned on, like, the drive. You know what I'm saying? It was like, dog, like, tomorrow's not promised, bro. You know? Like, dog, I felt like i'm a very i've always been a very in 
blessed to be a very healthy human. So that shit fucking happened. And I was like, oh, from one dude to another, fucking like, you know what I'm saying? After three rounds of chemo, dog, like, that just shit is strong as fuck. Like, you, I remember like even thinking that towards the end of like my my sessions, being like, dog, I might not like, like I don't want to get fucking wheeled into a fucking thing because I can't right. walk no more. But your uh, muscle atrophy and your fucking lack of nutrition because every even like the sight of water makes you want to fucking throw up. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's fucked up shit. But you got two ways of looking at it. You got you got the way of looking at it where like, uh, it's just fucking terrible experience that I went through, or it's like, nah, bro. Like now you realize you don't take shit for granted. You got what I'm saying? So now it's just turn it up to a million because you know that you're capable of it and you're fucking healthy enough to do it. And and again, tomorrow isn't promised, so we're fucking running through whatever the fuck comes gets in the way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and bro, I, I see that as a blessing, a hundred fucking percent. And and I'm a very private person. I don't talk about like that kind of shit. But while I was going through my shit, I remember thinking that like there was nobody that I could talk to about this because I don't know nobody in my age group that has gone through something like this. You got me? Re- reflecting back, do you think you held back a little bit too much and didn't open up enough? Or I'm, did you just really feel like... I'm happy with the way I de- dealt with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I don't... like. Why am I going to put like my homies in dark places because right. of some shit that I'm going through? You know what I'm saying? Like, fucking numb up isn't going to fix me. You know what I'm saying? Like, so... Again, bro, like... And probably the worst shit that I went through, the only shit that I'm like, fuck, that sucked, bro. It was like... Seeing what my family had to go through, you know what I'm saying? That fucked me. Like to to stay, that yeah. fucked me up. Other than that, bro, it was all like like dog. I there's fuck it. You, it's life, bro. You run through it, or you get fucking stuck. And we ain't getting stuck. You got me. We're running through shit. Um, and again, the only reason I put it out now is because I remember being in that position and being like, damn, I don't know what fuck I could talk to about this. Like that's gone through what I'm going through to right. to have answers for me. So now I put that shit out there because I'm like, fuck, if somebody else is going through through some shit like that, right. yo, feel free to fucking hit me up because cause I've been through it. You know what I'm saying? And Have you done that before? Have you have you openly, you know, put that? Because I don't know that I remember you saying that <clears throat> anywhere. Yeah, I was talking about it, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Uh, I want to say I put it out with the first mirror I did I um after I came out of chemo, dog. And again, I had a lot of blessing. Like, a lot of shit worked towards, like, my, my benefit because I'm a vain motherfucker, dog. Like, and it's not a good thing, you got me? But, like... But you're being honest about it, yeah. yeah. But, like, I didn't want to fucking be out, like, without a beard. You know what I'm saying? Like, a dog, like, to me, the, not not just that, not without a beard. It's just even the way I looked at that time was, like, fucked me up. Because, dog, I lost my fucking weight. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was pale as fuck. I remember you told me this, And then yeah. you not having a beard is, just, like, a different fucking person. Yeah. Thing. Like, thank God we're in the pandemic, so I was able to fucking, like, wear a mask. So nobody could tell what the fuck I was looking like or wear a fucking bandana. You know what I'm saying? Weird, and then I kind of, like, crazy. got to play that shit off. Um... But I got hit up to do a, a mural for, like, a, just a, a vote campaign. And, bro, to me, like, you know what I'm saying? It, yo, if we could decide, like, our future by voting, well, that shit's fucking important. You know what I'm saying? So as soon as that shit came my way, and I was like, yo. So I put it out throughout, like, that shit. And, and, and I thought it was important for people to, like, no, again, bro, like, if some sh- somebody's going through some shit, I want, like, yo, feel free to fucking hit me up because I've been through this shit, and I know, you know what I'm saying? And I understand how fucked up it is. And... And it's fucked up in many levels, dog. Like, just to, to not even know if fucking tomorrow's coming or to, like, how can I fucking manage this shit? Or even the fucking, well, how this whole conversation popped up with the weed shit. Like, right. The only thing that fucking opened up my appetite while I was going through that shit was fucking edibles. You got what I'm saying? Like, dog, they were giving me, like, all sorts and of... Who, and who suggested that after you were going through all that? I won't say... Like, no was it you or was it a friend? No, I, I had a... Uh, I won't say Dr. Domus. Dr. Domus hooked me up with, like, a... You know what I'm saying? Uh, we spoke about, like, the medical marijuana shit and okay. all that. You know what I'm saying? Again, I had, like, uh, I took it a few times, and I had a negative experience with it. Like, I have what they call, like, a runner's pressure, uh, runner's blood pressure. You know about that? Like, my blood pressure tends, I think that's what it's called. I might be wrong. Um, my blood pressure This is This is without the cancer. This is, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, you just did general, edible? Yeah. You, no, 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 no. This was wild cancer. So, I have what, <coughs> oh, what they call, okay, like, okay. A, a blood, uh, runner's blood pressure. I think that's the correct term. I don't know. Um, so my okay. my blood pressure generally runs low, which is a good thing because when I like exercise, I don't have to worry about my shit right. coming right. to abnormal like levels. Um, so since my my blood pressure generally runs on the low end, and I'm not positive about this, but I'm pretty sure what is what ended up happening is that a couple of times that I took edibles because bro, they they killed the like nausea. They opened up my appetite like a oh, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like a few times that I was able to eat properly was thanks to that shit. But um, a couple of times it also like. I'm assuming it just 
dropped my blood pressure way too low and I fucking ended up passing out. So, like, one time I woke up in the fucking bathroom, like, out cold, like, fucking drooling. Like, I didn't know how fucking long I was out for. And another time I passed out and then it, it was felt... too strong of an animal. Dog. I, 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 <laughs> I thought it was. Another time I passed out in the pool. Just fucked up because, like, I was literally walking, dog, and I knocked out, fell in the fucking pool, bro. You know, the splash woke me up underwater. But then Damn. had the fucking splash not woken me up. Like, oh, fucking been here. You know right, what I'm saying? right, right. So, once that shit happened, I was like, let me pump the brakes on that shit. You know? So, since then, you've never done an edible or smoked at all? And I'm over here trying to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, it's, it's whatever. You know what I'm saying? But I got plenty of homies that smoke, and it is what it is, bro. And, and I'm for it, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, I think that there's a whole lot of fucking people damped up for shit that now is legal. You know what I'm saying? I think right. this shit is stupid as fuck. Like, yo, if this shit is legal, like, let all these fucking people go. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think we're going with that, you know? You, you, you've been around long enough. You've seen the phases. You're an intelligent person. Do you, do you think we're going to get to that point where, I mean, obviously, you know, marijuana is legalized in a lot of states, but not federally. Right. Statewide, it keeps increasing. Do you think we're gonna go federal? Do you think you yeah. know we're gonna? No, it'd be idiots not to like right? tax the shit. Yeah, like, fucking do something with the money. You Plus, you're gonna cripple. Like, you're gonna cripple the cartel when you do that as well. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you will. Uh, you cripple them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't. I don't know enough about that subject to speak on it. But I do. I think at this. Point, you got. You got a hit on you. What the fuck? What you mean? I don't know. You got all kind of sounding like we got cartel people looking <laughs> in. <laughs> no, I don't know about that. <laughs> it goes to poker. It goes to poker face that I was talking about. You see, <laughs> I've been watching. I've been following somebody who uh, plays poker, and I'm like itching to play poker, man. Hey, man, some really, of you guys watching, man. Shit. Yeah, well, it's like, just oh, like you know. I laid off of playing poker since my homeboy Caballo. Shout out to my brother Caballo. Which, by the way, you know that's the podcast before this one with this one. Um, you know, we used to play a whole lot of uh, poker, man. I love playing poker. I think I feel like poker is like a chess game. It's a real life. It's a real. You're you're bluffing. Your your life is miserable. You're mad right now. There's so many things. It's not just poker. So I love the the challenge that comes behind it. I love that shit. Man. So when I'm, that, I'm, I'm big on like reading body, and I, yeah, I like, I like that. Yeah. You you talk on that, like you pick up on the shit. Um, I'm big on the whole like reading body language and you know what I'm saying, or even the way you like you, your mannerisms. It'll affect a lot of how a person course, reacts. Of course, of course, yeah, know what I'm yeah. So um, I'm big on. I, I like that you picked up on that shit. That's what's up, man. I mean, I I try, man. I try to be. Uh, I try to read as much as I can, dude. And when I tell you that sometimes, I don't overdo it, but like, man, if if I'm not with somebody, if I'm with somebody, I start tuning more into them. You know, like a girlfriend or a date or even a friend. Like a homeboy, it doesn't matter. Then, then I then I don't tune as much. But if I'm not with somebody, man, I'm like exits, entrances, that car, this person, how many that person's wearing a hat. Like, you know what? Of course, prison. Yeah, prison was yeah. the beginning of all that. I, I got and a homeboy that moves just like that, bro. I'll never take that back, though, dog, bro. You should, you should bring him on the podcast, dog, because that guy has a hell of a fucking story, bro. That's What's his name? Right, Give him a I'm shout right. out. Uh, my dog Mikey, bro. All right, Mikey, Mikey. Mikey. We're, we're gonna he talk know, about he Mikey. Knows who he is, but dog, that homie, bro, that's my workout partner right now, dog. Um, but he, did you just give me an alias like Mikey's not his real name? No, no, I'm saying that's that's his oh, name. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Oh, so okay. you know who he is, yeah. I'm saying, um, but dog, that homie moves like that, bro. Like we step in a room, he he sees who's there, who's there, like where the exit right. at, what, blah, 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 blah. It's all like dog, a fucking computer going off in his. I head mean, head. I like, mean, dog. I think it's an intelligent way of thinking. You know, you're, you're, you're always going to have your naysayers who are going to be like, oh, but then if you're thinking like that, then you're always thinking negatively. That means you're always expecting something to happen. Dog, that you're means you're never chess. positive. It's, it's not. You're playing chess in real life, dog. And that shit's wild, bro. Yeah. That's a big responsibility. But if you condition yourself for it to happen. Okay, like, look, you're saying that loud, right, this, but how many artists or non-artists can look at you and be like, how the fuck are you looking at this? Three by five Polaroid, and you're transitioning it into a fucking, not even life size, to a Godzilla size portrait on a wall. Like, how do you do that? Why won't you do the map? Why don't you do the? It's just something that you know you're, you're good at doing because of that's what you've been doing. Reading people, acknowledging things, being weary of things, you know, so on and so forth, ninja type shit. That's been my thing, you know. Yeah. So it's just. 
it just comes out, you know, shit. I don't I don't hide it. But I'm not paranoid. The, the the problem with that is people think that you're paranoid. Like you like you just you just looking left and right the whole time and like no, 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 no. I walk in and it's like I already know, you know, this and that and that's good enough and I'm comfortable and I'm just paying attention, you know, during it and that's all it is, you know. It's not nothing too much more past that, but Whatever. No, but it's, it's it's interesting. It's interesting to see like those other perspectives. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. oh, the human mind is so crazy. The fact that like I might be thinking about other shit. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, like my mind's always fucking moving. But like while my mind's moving in a certain direction, yours is in the complete opposite. You know, you're right. Very in the moment type shit. Right, 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 right. Where right. I might be more like in my head type shit. You know, and that's that's dope. There's, there's, and that's what's dope about dialogue, dog. You know what I'm saying? I get to exactly, man. That was that was the dopest thing you might have said tonight, man. That's <laughs> that's exactly what's dope about dialogue. Like, let's talk about it. Let's let's express that versus we're trying to guess each other. You know, the whole time we're just trying to guess, guess, guess. What are you going through? What are you doing? This and that. And I think unfortunately that's what happens with relationships, man. Mm. You know, you you hold back too much because your ego. You hold back too much because you don't want to fall in love. You don't want this. You don't want that. And then you just have this weird, you know, like, are you really being you or are you not, you know? Are you being defensive or you're not, you know? And one of those weird things, one of those weird pressures that comes out of nowhere. That, that's maturity, dog. Just yeah, getting, exactly. Getting, getting over your fucking exactly. ego and knowing when, when it's okay to communicate and, and even letting your fucking guard down, dog. I think a strong man knows that, like, he shouldn't be afraid of show, to show his weaknesses. You know what I'm saying? To, to me, that's strength, bro. If you're afraid to show your weaknesses as a man, then you're a fucking weak man. To me, you got know what I'm saying? Because, cause, dog, everybody's got weaknesses. You know right, let me put you on the spot real quick. Right. When was the last time you cried in front of somebody? Fucking A. I'm not a crier, bro, so mm. I'm trying to... I won't, I won't say anything against that, but I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of psychological wannabe experts who will be like, oh... Well, that just means you're totally enclosed. No, no, no. No, I'm, no, I'm, no. What it means you, is you just won't express yourself. I, I think it's the opposite, that I'm very, like, I express myself often, so I don't, like, bottle any emotions. You know Ooh, what I'm saying? I like that. I like so, that. I like, um, that. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. Yeah. But, damn, last time. But the naysayers are going to be like, if you don't give us some type of in date, of the last you're full time, of shit. The last time that I cried in front of someone <laughs> well, was fucked up. It was the day I, uh, that I cried in front of someone. It was probably... Don't well, give me something like somebody died. No. No, 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 no. It was while I was going through my shit. You know what I'm saying? While okay, I was going okay. Through, like, Did the chemo, chemo and shit. all that. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. I remember I like, cried with my mother. <clears throat> and, okay. And it was just like a fucked up situation. Have you ever openly showed that type of emotion in front of a close friend or... Maybe a significant other of some sort. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't see dog. Is is real? We're humans, bro. And part of like the beauty. And I know this sounds like some lame shit to ask, but this I think this is very. This, no, this, this is, is a, this, this is a big deal. Fucking question, like dog, for real. This, this, this is a dope like pod like conversation. With, right? You know yeah. I'm because like I always talk about the art shit, but like we we even though we've t touched on like art topics and whatever, we're going into like very personal like deep shit and and. It's it's different for me, but it's it's appreciated though because it's dope conversations. Um, my bad, I forgot the question. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I, 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 I was kind of putting you on the spot in regards to like opening up, you know. I I guess I guess what's flowing through my mind, and I'm I'm I, maybe I'm assuming that other people watching or listening will be thinking the same thing. As an artist, not just an artist, but a graffiti artist who came up somewhat on the streets, parents who were artists who had this influence on you you that meshed this graffiti to fine art to this and then you you just slowly but surely built this popularity and then here you are you, you're becoming this big ass impact in miami there's a lot of things going on right now right. especially for somebody who's a little bit enclosed a little bit you know uh, uh in Cerrado, where like yeah you're open you're friendly you're down to talk you're you're not an introvert but you ain't extra you're, you're you're a metrovert. Oh shit! Did I just start a new word? You're a metrovert. You, yeah, you you're not you're not. Oh, like I ain't trying to talk to everybody, but you're not like just trying to be so. You know, th th this is an honest question because when artists, you guys, you guys go into different levels of zones and and right. and, and vibes and energies. You know, so. I, I, don't, I don't know, man. I don't. I don't. I don't really know how to respond to the question. There, there, there's no specific answer, really. You know, there, there really isn't. You know, it's just one of those things that I just feel like people. I think people are intrigued by artists. Right. I really do. You know, like, what the fuck's going through your head? 
How'd you do that? How'd you shut everybody off? Well, what was, what was I remember when you did that mural for Manny. Shout out to Manny. Um, um, uh, I'm trying to give his his uh, his uh, business. Uh, a shout out Manny Garcia Manny uh, um, from Survival Survival shit I was with that homie today and I spoke to you about, I spoke to him about you there you go I was like yo I'm coming out here today and he was like yo tell homie I said what's up uh, you know and that, like, that, that brother has a great story man yeah. great success story his, on, his, his apparel yeah man yeah, exactly. I definitely want him on Survival yeah. so um, when you did that mural in the middle of fucking downtown this amazing goddamn gold chains flamingos his apparel, bullets, you know, like he told you, he just gave you the reins. He just said, look, do some, do what you want. Yeah. Just make sure you try to make it look like Miami ish and you try to da da da. And you, you just, you just went with it. Yeah. So it's, it's a weird thing to let an artist do his thing. You know, it's just like, yo, just do your thing. Take the dog off the leash. You do that and you go into your zone. That's a zone, bro. That's a zone. And that zone might be challenging because it's like, I need to cut people off. I need to just go into this nah, and just do me. I don't. I don't feel that way, man. No, I. I just enjoy it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm a creative fucking person. If you surround yourself with creative people, bro, then you just continue. Like, right. I'm, I'm getting ideas. I've gotten mad ideas while we've had this conversation. You know what I'm saying? That's part okay. of like your brain always fucking moving. Like, right. you might say a certain thing, and I'm like, oh shit, this should be cool like that, like that. You know what I'm saying? And um, if you surround and and bro, that's that's why I'm big on like. Surrounding yourself by the right fucking people. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Because back to the thousand percent. In, crabs in a bucket, dog. Yeah. You got a whole lot of motherfuckers out right. there. Like, oh, yeah, 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 I'm pat your back. And at the end of the day, they don't want shit for you. But if you surround yourself with like minded people, bro, that all want to grow, and we don't all got to be in the same field. But as long as we're all like supportive of each other, right. you know what I'm saying? As was, what's that? I see a meme all the time. Like, yo, be around those that mention your names in rooms, like when they're not in them. Mm. Like, that's that shit, dog. You know what I mean? Like, and. And again, bro, Eagles fuck shit up. A lot of people are like, no, nah, I'm going to be bigger than so so Like, dog, I'm not in competition with nobody, bro. The better you do, the better I'm going to do and vice versa. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you help me up, I'll help you up. And we keep fucking building. And if somebody falls down, then we fucking step back, pick them up, and keep fucking moving. You get me? But um, with the whole, yeah, there's just fucking no room for negativity, bro. There's no, you know. That's, that's actually the best way of putting it. That There's just no room for negativity. Yeah. That's it. If you're thinking like that... Either maybe you can't tell somebody they're in the wrong, but then I don't want to fuck with you. But you know, and, if you and and that's uh, damn dog is crazy because this week I fell into that, bro. Like into this this whole train of thought. You know what I'm saying? It was like no room for negativity, and then like I I was in a situation with somebody that I was like kind of like pushing them aside because I was like I don't got no time for you. But then like you know how like it's science, negative and negative. Like if if you're being negative, I'm like, right. I don't want to fuck with you. Do you want to lose weight? Do you want to have more focus? Are you looking to boost your immune system? Or are you an athlete that is in pain and needs to recover to continue to crush your goals? Well, here at Flueless Mobile Wellness, we can help you out with every single one of those through the use of our vitamin infusions. Our preventative health services are as easy as calling us up and we show up. Here at Flueless Mobile Wellness, your home is our office. Stay healthy. With flutus. The influence on so many people in so many ways, you know, uh, it's uh, it's one of those things as an artist, some people vibe with you, some don't. Some try to understand you, some don't. But then the process of trying to understand you teaches them something. You know what I mean? It's, it's one of those things like somebody, I'm, I'm speaking more like a martial artist. Um, you might not, nobody wants to get hit. Nobody wants to get hurt. Nobody wants to do all this excessive shit. But if I convince you about the challenge, the art behind, you know, mastering something and so on and so forth, and competitive, then you'll be more inclined, bro. You've had such a great influence on people, you know, through 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 what you've been doing, and uh, one of those things that you did was, and I definitely don't want it to be uh, forgotten. You did something. I want you to elaborate a little bit on it. You went to a school. You you volunteered your time, and you did a little art, some type of art program for kids, where you were heavily involved. Was this the beginning of last year, or was this the year prior? Damn, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure which which one you're talking about. So I I go on a mission. I've gone on a on a few. Um, it wasn't a mission though. I know you go on your missions outside the country, this and that. No, right, it right. it was it was one of these schools. Um, 
Oh, man, I don't know which school it was. One of these art schools in Miami. In but Miami? Yeah, yeah. My memory's terrible, bro. I know I, I did something. Why do you think, up. by the way? You said that a few times. Why do you think your memory's so bad? I mean, I know why. It's the, the chemo shit. You oh, know what I'm really? Yeah. So um, my memory's really bad because of that shit. Um, I know I did something with the Museum of Graffiti where uh, we were doing, like, uh, kids' graffiti class, uh, classes every Oh, Sunday. maybe that's what it was. That could have been it. Um I know I painted a mural in another kid's school. You know, I painted a little mural with my like, niece out there. Um, that was through Didi. And, um, um, damn, I forgot the name. The name of the Speaking of your niece, by the way, you, you recently posted something of her um, painting something or was it drawing something? Both of them. Yeah, yeah both. Both of, both of them are painting and drawing, man. They're ill, dog. It's dope. <laughs> it's, dude, how do you feel about that? Being being an uncle who's influenced, you know, your niece like that. You know, I mean, I, I don't think it was influenced by me. I mean, it might be. You know what I'm saying? But I get well, my mother. Like, right. my, my mother's had them painting since they were like little. You know, and my my sister is an engineer, so like you know, they see her kind of like putting shit together too. So I, I just think it goes in the family, you know. But it's dope to like see the next generation and doing shit, and it's, it's fucking dope. Speaking of the next generation, do you feel like okay, so? You're not an old coon by far. I, I hate motherfuckers try to call me an old coon. I'll take it as like some, you know, some G shit. Like that's dope. But then then I got my young fighters, all my clients who like to, you know, talk shit and bust my balls and they're like, you old. Listen, I look motherfucking young <laughs> if you're gonna call me old, but I know they're just busting my balls. I'm forty five. I say that with pride. But from an artistic standpoint, you've been through generations, you've been through eras of the art. Right. You've seen the the different stages that it's taken. Same way a musician would, a rapper would, a singer would. From the stages that you've seen, I, I don't know. I don't know if you want to answer this. I'm gonna ask you. How old are you? Oh, we're gonna keep that on the low. Kiss my <laughs> God damn. If you guys go back to my first podcast, did some. I was pulling teeth for the first fucking thirty minutes. We were talking about the law of us, the statute, the, the statute, the of statute of limitation. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Anyhow, um, you didn't pass forty, did you? No. Nah, okay, there you go. All right. So you've been through enough eras. Right. Being in the era that you are in now, whatever that era is, how do you, how do you, how do you, how does that make you feel looking back to the other eras? Do you feel like it's all meshing? Do you feel like there's always one that's gonna overtake the next, and then it keeps, is this a rotation and you don't take it personally? Or I don't, I don't think much about it, but if if I have a favorite, it's probably the one before mine. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, what would that be considered? What is that? Like the, like the '90s. The, okay. The, the '90s, like as as far as like Miami graffiti goes, I fuck with like a lot of of the '90s, the the writers that came up in the '90s. You know what I'm saying? Like that's probably my favorite. Um, I think there was like a lot of respect there, a lot of originality, um, a lot of pioneering, a lot of fucking just breaking down the doors for the shit, the, the ones that came after. You get what I'm saying? I, on some arrogant shit, I'm always going to be like, dog, like, which is weird that I still consider myself new school because I know, you know what I'm saying? I came a little while before. Okay. But, um, but the, yeah, 90s graffiti in Miami was. It's fucking trend setting like a motherfucker, bro. Do you feel like there's changes coming about right now, or is it just shit being recycled? No, yeah, no. Nah, Some shit's hotter than not, and just that's just it. I think what sucks about like now, bro, is that everything's so like global because of the fucking internet. Internet, exactly. We, like we lost local saturate things a little we, bit. We lost local styles. You know what I'm saying? Like I remember, like I think with Miami, we still got a little bit of that. You know what I'm saying? Where we go to certain places. Because other people can see what's going on in other countries so easily that they start biting it. Everybody and then... dresses the same, bro. You, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, there's, there's a handful okay. of spots. Everybody dresses the same. Everybody paints the same. Everybody fucking, like, you got people in fucking Miami painting like they're from L.A. You got people in fucking, you know what I'm saying? As well as the dressing and, part. Okay. Right. You're or, right. I get you. Or you got people in Japan dressing like they're from Puerto Rico or, and vice versa. You know what I'm saying? Is it Japan? By the way, sorry to cut you off. Is it Japan known for uh, maybe if it's not Japan, it's China, the China, um, dressing like cholos? It's Japan. You got all the I've seen like in Korea too. Korea, like, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, the, like the fucking uh, what's them call it? The, uh, the... Even in Argentina, I got a bunch of homies in, in Argentina that are like heavily influenced by like the like cholo really? culture, dog. And it's dope because they push that shit to the next level. It's, it's crazy certain, how that happens. Like that. It's cool about it, but right, but, but I, I, I really enjoy the fucking like. The 
local culture. You know what I'm saying? And that's why where it derives from, that's, like that's where it really comes from. Yeah, dog. Like um, that's you know when people tell me how Miami is fuck, I take that shit as a compliment, bro. Cause like, dog, we're we're ambassadors of this fucking culture. We're, you know what I'm saying? And like a big part of why like why I started doing the shit that I was doing is because I saw locals like we're out here, motherfuckers are painting Biggie and like. Tupac and fucking Nas and it's like dog we're in Miami like, uh, like yeah like you know what I'm saying like nah dog we're gonna paint Celia Cruz and Trick Daddy and fucking Gloria Stefan and we're gonna paint you know what I'm saying local shit dog like why are we gonna do Michael Jordan in Miami you know what I'm saying right like, nah, right dog, we're doing Dwayne Wade and fucking UD and fucking uh so on that note so on that note so one of the last projects you just did and then I'll, I'll, after after we talk about that I, I want to dig in and pick your brain, whether it's whether it's, it's in the horizon or whether you've been thinking about it. Right. What would be the next project? The last project you did, if I'm not mistaken, is the '72 Dolphins, right? Meaning the undefeated season for all you motherfucking haters. <laughs> okay, I don't care how shitty the Dolphins might have been every other year after before or even up until now we just got in the playoffs by the way we, we gotta flip the camera off Miami's still on top <laughs> <laughs> but um it's the 72 Dolphins that's our undefeated season the only undefeated season ever in the NFL okay just so everybody knows for those of you guys who don't know say it again Miami's still on top <laughs> there you go Don Shula was the head coach and then you had key players. How did that come about, Dissum, where you started? Like, 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 I don't know how much you can say about it, but who approached you about that? Where, where did that come about? It's a certain wall. It's a big-ass wall. It's good enough to do a ginormous, immaculate, you know, portrait of, of all that stuff that you did. How, did. how did this whole thing just happen? How, how, does, how does that happen? Um, I got hit up by the Dolphins. They were like, yo, we've been, been looking what? at your work for a while. You know what I'm saying? We got this mural in the works. You want to pay tribute to the 72 Dolphins. Um, and I was like, fuck yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and, and I'm going to be 100% honest. Like, I, like, I'm huge on basketball. Like, I wasn't like. Right. We spoke football, about that earlier. You know yeah. I'm not yeah. big on football. It doesn't like, matter. You're as, Miami, as, bro. As, and, uh, you know, part of like our, our discussion was that. Like, yo, are you a Dolphins fan? And I was like, yo, I was big on football when I was younger. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think. Oh, damn Marino days and all that shit. Like, you know, loved it. Um, but it was just, dude, I've, I've been so busy with this shit that I haven't kept up. Right. Um, and then they were like, but are you about the Dolphins? I was like, I'm about anything that's Miami. And they were like, yo, that's fucking good enough for us. You know what I mean? Like, we fuck with that. Not in those words. Right, but, of course, you know? of course. Um, <clears throat> Did they, they give like, you the images? Did they nah, give you the... Nah, nah, they nah, said bro, just I got boom. 100%, and I'm super appreciative. Wow. I got 100% creative freedom on that project. Um. The, the only limitations that they gave me was that they were like, yo, we need this shit done in a week, which I don't know if you've seen the wall. It's a fucking huge wall. Um, and Not that I would know it. I don't know how many people would know it. Do you remember the uh, the uh, measurements? Height, length, width? I want to say it was about 70 feet by... 30 <clears throat> Damn, 70 by, feet. Yeah, Holy 70 shit. 70 feet by 35 feet, more or less. So it was... It was a pretty big wall, man. And um, this is where? What, what, which neighborhood exactly? It's in Wynwood. It's actually at the Margulies uh, Collection, which bro, the Margulies Collection is one of like the largest, uh, from my understanding. So before I forget, wh where could somebody listening right now, how could they find that picture on the internet? They What's the easiest the, uh, way? Instagram? My, my through, Instagram? Through, through your yeah, Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So just D DISM305. DISM305. D-I-S-E-M. D -I -S -E -M 305. Okay, guys, just yeah. remember that. You know, not that we're... But just remember that. All right, this right. three or five. Um, but yeah, man. They, they so that me. was the last one, and and then you you did your thing. They loved it. Um, I hope they loved it, <laughs> bro. And that that was with Sinner and with my dogs. We had a really short time period to make that what happen. Every time you post, because I just always try my best to show love to my dudes. Every time, whatever somebody's uh, commenting, I'm just liking their comments, you know? Because I just want to put the algorithms in your favor, Thank right? You, so I'm always that. just liking it. And when I see what people are saying, I'm like, damn. And I'm paying attention. Like, yo, this nigga's got real people. Like, all kind of people telling him, like, dope-ass shit of what they're feeling. And then every time you put some art up, I found myself liking more and more and more. I'm like, holy shit, well, how many fucking comments does he have? It's like... Yo, people are really tuning in. Like they're really appreciating your art. Like, like the the world is supporting it. The world is is, is pushing it, and it's a dope thing because you know artists. Um, I think, I don't know. I don't. I don't know because you've been in this industry for so long. 
it feels like if you're an artistic, creative person, this is the time to show it. The last two, three years, this is the time to show it. For whatever reason, I don't know how to describe it. Right. But this is the time. Haircut, clothes, uh, apparel, expression, some of the things I don't agree with. But this is the time to show it. And, man, you have fucking bloomed immensely through that shit. Thank you, bro. Do you have any specific projects already lined up or... Let's say uh not to do list, but um I don't want to say bucket list. What would you like to do, even if it's not lined up for you? What is something that? What well, is there a country? You said Costa Rica. You said uh no, we gotta um, go to Europe. We gotta go to Europe. Europe was one of them. I, I and what do you have in mind? But is there a certain? Do you think about a certain design, a certain no, uh, no, no, no. a certain character, a certain person no. that that represents uh, I, that country? And I, I never usually like say this kind of shit because. People will jump the gun. You got what I'm saying? Okay. But by the end of the month, so hopefully by the time this shit drops, I'm definitely gonna I'm gonna work on a Pat Riley, which I gotta drop that Ooh. shit. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's the OG. It's dog. deserving. Yeah, it's yeah, deserving. Yeah, yeah. Of course it that's, is. That's that's one that you know what I'm saying. I gotta do. Now you got me thinking about the Benny Morin in Cuba, dog. You know what I mean? That that would be, bro. And then um, I mean, there's, there's a couple other projects I want to do in other places. I want I want to dabble more with you know I got a little like musical project that I'm working with, which is like mad left field. Not that I'm trying to rap or sing or that bullshit. Okay, well, hold on, hold on. Now, now I gotta interrupt you because I I do have to uh, remind people of, of something that just happened. That even though because you never have been the type of person to gloat, you've never been somebody to brag, you never be, you're not that dude. That's one of these reasons that I vibe with you so much, bro. I forced myself to post shit. I'm like, oh my God, that's right. I got to market. I got to this, I got to that. You literally just did a video with not just anybody. Like literally not just anybody. Yeah, yeah. This is Tell the World, <laughs> which, which happens to be a old friend of yours. No, no, no. No, not at all. No, no, no. This no. is all through the artwork? Yeah, yeah. It's just this just organically happens, man. That yeah, just organically This is how great bro. that is. Yeah, just not only that, but the fact that you look like a fucking savage. <laughs> <laughs> so that was very organic. So man. so just he his management crew hit you up. And for and for people who okay, Anuel is, is A N U E L. That's it. Dobla. Right? Dobla. Okay, so he's a he's a very famous reggaeton artist. He's put out some dope ass hits. He's is he originally from? I believe he's Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican. Yeah. Okay, so you got featured in this video. Right. He got hearsay from your artwork, but somehow your look is what did it. Not the artwork or no, combined. There's more about the look kind of thing. That that was all really random, man. That was a that was a very like random thing that unique that just, thing to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah that that kind of just everything, all the right pieces fell in the right places. You know what I'm saying? Like right. I, I didn't pursue it; it just kind of came my way, and and it just happened, bro. And and it, it was you know me, dog. I'm shy as fuck, man. I don't like right. cameras, I don't like none of that shit. But it just made sense, and I was like, all right, fuck it. What's dope about that experience is that man, I got to meet a lot of like really dope artists. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, um, the director for the video, like True Man, True View fucking ill man and and uh a lot of like ill cinema uh photographers videographers like it was, it was a really dope experience plus it also got me a little comfortable you know what i'm saying with like the getting around the camera shit, right you know? right it was, it was, that was super random very uh, dope experience i mean i would i would as a friend bro i would tell you yeah man keep forcing yourself into those situations because bro i don't say that type of shit of the sky's the limit you know i love the saying it's not that it's just like the path that you're going on, you're you're gonna be put in those predicaments. No, you're, you're gonna be in front of cameras on so many levels, from from an art fucking uh, uh, presentation type, you know, ordeal to something for a specific artist, for a specific uh, athlete. I mean, come on, D Wade, fucking Udonis has them. People like Trick Daddy, Pitbull, you know, all these people who show you so much love. This is just Miami bound. You're gonna keep doing this, so yeah. You know, you, you got to try to, you know, try your best to get used to that because that shit's going to pop on you. You're going to be like, oh, you know, like somebody out of fucking South Park. So, something I've, I've learned, man, is that we grow as humans through, like, being uncomfortable. You got what I'm saying? Yeah, like, man. Hell yeah. Even, Hell even yeah. Fucking, like, lifting weights, dog. That's right. Like, you're, that ain't you're, that's uncomfortable. Right. You're, no. You're not, you're not going to push up your weight without being uncomfortable. Right, first, you right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, fuck it. Like, you put yourself in uncomfortable positions to fucking grow. You know what I mean? And, like, it's, like... 
fucking I got mad homies, dog. I don't like doing certain shit because it's uncomfortable. Like, fuck it, bro. You want to grow? Put yourself in an uncomfortable situation. Nothing comfortable is going to bring you fucking growth, bro. You got me? And fuck it. Just run it. This, um, do you do any kind of, like, personalized type, like, artwork for people? Like, do people ever ask you, like, hey, can you do me a 24 by 24 uh, whatever of this picture of me and my husband acting like two fucking idiots, but you know, but just do what you do. Do do, do those requests come? Yeah. Do you entertain them? Is that not your thing? You know, like I, do, I mean, it's it's some it's part of the art world. You know, we got commissioned pieces all the time. You know, and and I I'm always open to like doing commissioned pieces. You know, the thing is, I always tell people like this is this is what my schedule is looking like. This is the time we got. If you're, if you're cool working with that time schedule, and then yeah, and you know, and then we go into like the budget talk and all that. But yeah, as long as creative freedom is there, I'm for it. You know, I'm not doing no like racial shit, no fucking like you know what I'm saying. Like I don't like right. I stick to my morals as far as like what I accept to do and whatnot. If some shit I just see that it ain't right, I'm I'm not fucking with it. I mean, it's understandable. Obviously, anybody would respect that. You know, I mean. <clears throat> Some people like to flirt with the uh, the edge of, of of you know testing the waters out and doing you know controversial shit. Yeah, I'm good on that. why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck that. There's no reason to you know let let your art speak for itself. There's no reason to test those waters. Right. <clears throat> you, but you will be testing. Remember that. That's oh, for sure. Oh, it's it's gonna come. Tested, bro. Stay gonna test it. They're gonna be like this dude with this beard. He's from Miami. Hell, no, I want to tell him. You know. Let me get some of my my mom, my mother in law shooting herself while she's you know like what the fuck no <laughs> I've, I've had I've had like weird shit you know what I'm saying like with political shit you know I've oh as well I've, yes that's right that's more realistic than the I've bullshit said, I'm like, talking no, bro I don't want to be involved in that and right. I've done political things that you know what I'm saying like that I do by where I had you know what I'm saying but again bro it's it's all I'm I'm blessed to be in a place where I can pick and choose what I want and fucking money doesn't move me so fuck it. Well, um, one thing, a few things I want to bring up before we close this out. One, and I didn't want to bring this up earlier because you know I think this is a big, huge quality of you. You know, you have a you have a barbershop, right. and your barbershop is one of those things that you know is is a is a business investment that you made early on in your younger days, and it's paid off where it allows you to be able to you know journey out and and, and do these things as as far as your creativity and your artistry and everything else. And that's dope as fuck. So, you know, and from an inspirational standpoint, for those of you guys listening, you know, sometimes it's difficult to chase these dreams like what you have done if you don't have something that can give you that opportunity. So don't put your eggs all in one basket like, hey, I just need to, you know, mom and pop or your wife or, or, or put yourself in a bad situation where you're broke, you know, month to month. No, you got to do this strategically. And you did that, and that's some dope shit. But on that topic... If everybody wants to get a dope ass haircut, if they're in this area of <laughs> Coconut Grove, Miami, what's the name of your barbershop? Tell these people where you're at. Oh, man, this is the Southside Barbershop, 27 US 1. Southside Barbershop. All right, so if you guys are anywhere in that South Miami area, Coconut Grove area, you want to get a fly ass haircut. My boy's had his barbershop for the longest time. Right. But outside of that, people can reach you at an Instagram, Dism, D I S E M 3. Zero five. This from three oh five. That's his Instagram, brother. You got, have you done a website yet? I got a website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my, my website. I had. I've been had a website. That shit got hacked, bro. For real though. Yeah, it got hacked. But it, when we did our first podcast, we were you already had one. I don't know if it was still. I don't know if it was up around then. But okay, but but you did one, but I was hacked. So what are you, are you, are you fixing it? Hacked. No, it got hacked. No, it's back up now. Thank God. Thanks to Drebs, too, dog. Drebs, Drebs got that. He shout out to Drebs. Shout out. We gotta get him on here, bro. D Drebs. D R E P S S, but it's more than that. It's not just yeah, Drebs. Oh, it's more. His Instagram is Drebsta. T uh, D R E P S T A H. T A H. All right, Drebsta. D R E P T. No, S S T A H. All right, Drebsta. That's that's one of Dissum's main partners, man. He's a raw ass artist on himself. Dissum's known him for a long time, so um. What can we expect, brother? What do you got coming, man? You, I, you're not wanting to lock shit in until you lock shit in. Right. I know you said you want to do something in Europe, but you haven't locked anything in. Right. Give us some goals, man. I want people to, you know, I know people are going to follow you no matter what because they're going to support Miami, you know, especially as loyal as you are. But what well, can they look forward to? I'm dropping an art, uh, a few prints this year, you know, like art prints this year. Um, I'm looking forward to having an art show with Uva Gallery 
Um, I got another okay. art show in the talks right now with with somebody else. Um, what else? We got that Pat Riley mural. That's just that's fucking. Hopefully, you got the I, spot already. I, I, you I have the spot? Yeah, dog. I got the spot. I'm, oh. I'm trying to start it. Hopefully, it'll be done like started by the time this shit drops. You know what I'm saying? Okay, because really? I, I don't. And I and this is dope. And I'm saying it now because I know if it fucking this shit drops before I start it, then somebody else might beat me to it. So fuck that. We won't get it. Nice. Um. Uh. The Pat Riley mural. Yeah, that shit has been planned for a bit. Um. And yeah, like I said, I'm working on like a musical project where like I'm kind of like art directing some shit, you know. Um, That's new to me, bro. You haven't told me anything about that, yeah, man. Yeah, really? Yeah, so you yeah. have some art, art, artistic influence into some type of music, musical but, project? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. So we're doing that shit, and then just yo, just keep building. You know what I'm saying? Trying to like put Miami on the map, you know? And just That's what's up, bro. That kind of shit, man. Just Hell positivity, yeah, bro. Man, I, I, G, when I tell you, man, like. The first time you came on to the podcast, man, it had a big impact on me. Ever since, you know, we we our friendship has grown big time. Thank we we we've introduced each other to different people who have grown on us both. Right. You, Lee's, and and and, and, and too, um, nice. Yeah. too nice, and you know all this like that. That's the beauty of a, of real friendships. People who don't um, get threatened by other people's presence, and and we just want to network and and build each other up. And the, the fact that it's been what is it has it been. Um, two years? Like three years, maybe, dog. Really? Three or two. I don't fucking know. It was 23. COVID, man. COVID fucks us up, bro. Yeah, yeah, COVID yeah. fucks us up. But it, it's been, um, hasn't been long enough. Because here we are, bro. Sure. When I tell you I really appreciate you, my brother, thank you for coming back on the podcast. Guys, thank you for make sure you follow him. Dism305, that's D I S E M 305. Follow him, show your support. This guy represents Miami on so many levels. All his art, all his dedication, his loyalty, and he's got so many big things. Don't be that person who falls behind like, oh my God, I heard about him, and then he's fucking the next Picasso in like five years. <laughs> don't don't be that person, okay? Because then he's going he's gonna to be a real Miamian, and he's going to wipe his ass with you. <laughs> my brother, I love you. Guys, love be safe out Thanks. there. Thank you for supporting the podcast. Don't forget to get your merch. Appreciate you guys. See you on the next one. Peace.